Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithm. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on to bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruit table brand. You can't move me. The music is man. It's a con job, but this grand. I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stand. Yeah, it took some hard work. Line up, play a huge role. I can say that I don't. But they're feeding you fool's gold. If I know one thing, the truth's home. Even if it's a tough thing to swallow, an even harder thing to hold, and truly know without a doubt while on the globe. Even though that seems inherent, it ain't always so apparent. Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it. But don't worry, it's a pretty February in a year with more to carry and more days is yet to call under the sun, taking the ferry to the city where the moment's extra pretty. Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain that isn't equal to the real world. All that stress ain't saving me, fear though. I swear to God, I'm trying. But they pushing the demons down my esophagus, screaming the easy life, what I want always. Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. But I'm more so now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall grin, and if you feel it. Do it with me and just sing what the song says. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. Dearly beloved. And welcome to Unsolicited. I hope everybody's having a good day on this awesome Monday. <laughs> Guys, it's, it seems like the times go like so fast. It seemed like I was just with you all yesterday, but I actually was with y'all on Saturday. But anyway. <laughs> it is Monday again. It's an awesome Monday, and I'm so glad to be here. Y'all checked out the topic. It is the manosphere has women confused. I have questions. <laughs> and Mr. C, you said what kind of questions you had? You gonna you gonna help me out, Mr. C? Hey, boss, what you want to know? Listen, I appreciate this so very much. Listen, we're just gonna have a conversation because I do have some questions. You know, I want to respect every and everybody. At all times. So I got to make sure I know what I'm doing and, and where I'm at and, you know, all of that good stuff. But before we get started, I want to go over a couple of notes again. If y'all haven't seen um, SB gear on these platforms yet with the five stars, y'all ain't looking hot enough because it's out there. I've been seeing it and I appreciate you guys so much for going over to my channel, going over to the merchandise and picking up something from SB Gear. It is five stars. Remember what I said, y'all. If y'all see four stars out there, it was not me. I did not make a mistake as somebody else impersonating SB Nation. <laughs> Don't worry about that stuff. Look over them. Mm -mm -mm. Look over them. So um, the other thing is, I'm going to bring up my co-host for tonight, and then I'm going to introduce my other co-host, because guess what? Black Man Unfiltered had a little situation he has to take care of. Hopefully, he'll be able to join us. But guess who I have? Instead of him for now, it's just as good. It's just as good. I love them both. So here we are. Sir Hell Speaks. Come on in. <laughs> hey. How are you doing tonight? I am fantastic. How are you? I am doing good. And it's so good to have you here. And hopefully we can get through this conversation. And I know you're going to add so much more to what <laughs> to my questions. That it's just going to be, we're going to know everything by the end of the night. So I appreciate you so much for being here. Last minute, stepping up, coming up, looking good, sharp as a tack. That ain't me. That was Mr. Boss that said. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be. <laughs> And also, guys, I want to make sure I say uh, hello and have you all say hello to my other co-host, Mr. Boss. He in the back. Really beloved. So I say this every week. Do y'all think that's going to make it work any harder? No. <laughs> 
but we gonna still get him his props because he all in there with them sound effects, right? He'd be right on it. So we got to make sure we say hello to him too. Um, what else is there? Before I get started, we're gonna make sure we say hello to a few people in the um comment section of, uh, section over here chatting already. And make sure when you come into the live, you giving me the thumbs up. We'll appreciate that, and we'll get through the night very well, very very well. Listen, one other thing I need to tell you guys, because I sometimes forget. Remember, we read all super chats, but with a nine ninety nine and up super chat, you get the money line song. It goes like this. Now y'all realize Sir Hill was over there busy in his phone, but I'm going to let him do his money line for y'all and y'all going to really laugh at him, but it's okay. He should have worked it out by now. It's been some time since he did it last, but it's okay. Y'all going to see it. Gonna I've actually it. took some lessons. I hired a professional. And so I've got a few moves now that I'm, I'm, I'm eager to share with you tonight. Yeah. Okay. Y'all heard that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, did you want to say anything before we get into this comment section saying hello, or do you want me to continue? Now, I appreciate you uh, calling me up here. Really good to see you. Always good to be in SB Nation. A shout out to Uncle Boss. And much respect to the chat. Good to see everybody tonight. Good, good. Thank you. So listen, family values. Hello. How are you? Listen, this all your fault. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Thank you so much. This will be a good conversation. Mr. C, hello. How are you? Uh, the Thanos Theory. How you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Mr. Steele, it's good to see you guys. Shelby, hello, hello, hello. M. Mills, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here, Miss Jennifer. It's good to see all of you all. Gerard, you too. How are you? It's good to see. Uh-oh, Mr. Steele, uh, Dr. Steele is already on it. Doc, let us get into the conversation first. <laughs> Sarah, hello, how are you? It's good to see you here and there. Thank you so much for that. Ine, thank you. Thank you all for being here. And it's so many of you in the comments, in the live right now. Thank you for giving me the thumbs up as you come in. We would appreciate that. And if I have uh, Arliss Kimberly, hello, this is your first time here. Thank you very much. Obviously not. You say looking good as usual. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for that. And I'm glad to see you here. Um, Archer ain't, ooh, ooh. Y'all be trying to make me cuss. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Also, make sure when you're coming into the live, you give me a thumbs up. Hey, little podcast, I seen you. Hello, how you doing? I messed that all up, but you know, I didn't really mess it up, but I just wanted you to be special that way. So I said it my way, but I hope it's okay. <laughs> if there's anybody else out there that I did not call your name, you know, I will try to do so throughout the broadcast. But you know what? I'm glad you're here. Uh, Miss B, BC, how are you? I think I just, yes, good to see you. And if there's anybody else, y'all forgive me. I'll try to um, make sure if I recognize someone different. Shelby, I think I said hello, but if I didn't, it's good to see you, girl. You know it is. But uh, we're going to get started with this because what we do on Monday, Sir Hill, is that we kind of do um, current events. We kind of go around the web world and share things that have been happening. It's getting crazy out here. Um, Absolutely. It's getting worse. So uh, it's a couple of things I want to share and just get your 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 <laughs> your input about them or your thoughts about them because it's just unreal. But for the last I think maybe for the last three Mondays. Not intentionally, but I've been reporting on mass shootings. And of course, we had, what, about four this past weekend in the United States. So right now we're over 350 mass shootings in the United States. Over 350. This year? Yes. Yes. Good grief. Yes. Remember, like a mass shooting is, uh, I think, four or more. Shoot, four or more uh, people. Yeah. Being shot, not necessarily killed, but four more and we've had four this past weekend and now we're over you know what guys if i really want to think about this because i remember last week as we, we're growing about 50 every week it's over 350 mass students as of today oh there's something that needs to be done about the second amendment yeah i love my guns i gotta have my gun here i need it for my protection but there's gonna be coming a time really soon where they're gonna be having some votes on Taking some guns. I saw a man on a commercial in Texas. He said, you think you're going to get my AR? You're out of your mind, Mr. Biden. <laughs> so people getting real particular about these guns. And I know they need their protection. But 
but the wrong people are getting these weapons. I so think you were right about that. Bad things are happening. So we got to come up with some solutions because we don't want to get to the point where they take these things from us or they make it. They villainize us for having them. And that's what that's not what you want, because we we get we we I would say have them legally. They're certified. We get you know, we have uh, we go to class. We do all these things to have our weapons so we can make sure that we're using them safely. But so many people don't. So security bus question for you, though, sure. that's, that's that's a huge one. That's a huge uh, area of contention. Like what do like what could we say to convince people against, you know, being able to how do you convince people with something like this? I didn't realize how big this was until I moved to Texas. And I'm like, folks, don't play about their arms. Not so in, what not in the South, to they convince? Don't. Listen, in the South, they don't play about their weapons because, you know, we like country folks and we just have these. <laughs> but I don't know. But we're going to have to do something because these um, these weapons and these big weapons are getting, they're finding a way on the street some way and young folks are getting them. And they don't mind. I don't know if it's the adventure, the way it sounds or what have you, but they don't mind using them. And a lot of people are being harmed or killed from this, this excuse me, being deleted because of it. Now, some things they put in some amendments that they're, they're talking about making is, of course, um, the age limit. But if you remember, I don't know if you know or not, but the last mass shooting that we had with the young boy was when I think went into the grocery store. His dad said he actually signed for him to get those weapons and got the weapons for him on his birthday. Yeah. So us increasing the age, I, that probably doesn't really matter, but we got to do something. Even if, I don't know, I don't know, but, but we got to do something because the young, the age is getting younger, you know, and there are more people, there are more happening, but I got to tell you this. I hadn't started following until recently. We only have a, we were the same way last year. It was the same last year too. We're a little bit more than we were last year at this time. So it's not like it's just outrageous, but the thing is, is we don't hear about it. You only hear about it when it's, you know, like kids or children or it's, uh, you know, like that. But a mass shooting is four more being shot at one time. That is mass. That's too many. Yeah. So we got to start paying attention because, I, you know, it's getting very, situations are getting very desperate and young people are the ones that are being deleted. Do you, do you think that is, it's like the, um, like the, uh, the, the, the preciousness of life, like a lot of young folks are just hopeless. And so life, it doesn't, you know, a lot of them grow up in these places where this death is what they see so regularly. So what is the gun? Let me say this, and and I know y'all ain't gonna agree with this, but I think it's 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 that. But I also think that the young people that we're talking about now have grown up with nothing but video, nothing but video. And I really think that there's a part of their mind that thinks that they can get a do over or an extra man. They're not considering life, real life, for what it is, because you know now since you have 4K, everything looks so real. If that's all you've ever seen in your entire life, I can imagine that it could really do tricks on your brain. Now, this is me talking. I haven't talked to a doctor about it at all, but I can imagine that it can pull you in. And when you play in those games, what's the one that what's the one that that's Call of Duty? Is it Call of Duty where they shoot people and kill them? And, the, you know, some of them that's get up. Some of them don't. I just think that, that 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 plays a major part in these young people's minds and the way they respond to other people. I really do. I hate that because it's so trivial, but I think it's so real. And I'm going to tell you why I say this, because uh, in, in our business, there was a young man that did something just like this. And when he realized that he actually attempted to kill someone, to delete two men, two officers, when he was charged with it, his whole, uh, he lost all his, his body fluids. Not all of his body fluids, but you know what I'm saying. He sit there and urinated in the middle of the police station. So not until that moment did they tell him, you being charged for attempted murder, did he realize that, oh, I actually shot somebody, shot at someone. Had no, no he would, did, didn't put it together at all. Had no clue. And I, I just don't see how that could be, knowing that you have a real weapon, you're shooting. It was just good that he did not kill these two men. But 
he didn't know. It was like he didn't know. So I think a lot of psychological warfare. Hey, maybe. Thank you, St. Louis. Maybe. But, you know. So here we got to do something because this is going to get closer and close. Where well, it's probably already you in Texas. It's probably already pretty close to home. Yeah, we don't play games in Texas. No. We, everybody packing. And I mean, from the churches to the hate to say it, but some schools, like everybody packing. Yes. And 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 you it's uh, open, right? Open carry, right? It sure is. See, this is getting real scary because when you have open carry, that means, of course, you're free to carry it. But how do we know the difference from a person that's open carrying and a person that's intending to do harm in about 10 minutes? And that's the thing. We don't know. Because what's interesting is some of the people who do this, they don't look like it at all. At all. You wouldn't look at them and determine, nope. But like a moment of road rage, I make a person flip and pull that thing out quickly or the perception of threat. You can just use the perception of threat to incite violence. And that's what makes it scary. That could be anybody because I don't know if it was in Texas, but, you know, there was a, a mass shooter in a mall this weekend. It was one. Oh, it's just too much. I mean, it's got it's gotten me and I'm not going to lie. Y'all have to pray about this, but it's gotten me real leery about going anywhere. You know, I'm in the mall. I'm looking around. Um, I'm not going to no movie theater. I'm not going to no comedy club. I'm not doing it because if I can't see the, the exits real clear and it's dark, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to be able to get out soon enough. And I think sometimes now people are doing this because they're hearing that it's being done. Because now it's all publicized, it's on the news, and okay, why not? Why can't I do it just to get people all scared? See, people, some people think that stuff funny because their mind is not correct, and you know they don't think correctly. So, I'm just you know bringing some awareness to it, guys. Y'all pay attention, read your sec, read the Second Amendment. Uh, we want to be able to have our weapons, but we got to do. Oh, the other thing too that's major, and I know y'all know this, but you're not de- if you haven't been declared mentally ill then you're not, even though I know that you are. You know what I mean by that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just haven't got the, 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 the diagnosis yet. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you haven't yet been diagnosed, do you know you can go down there and buy a gun, even though I know that you, me and you both know that you ain't, you're not right, but you haven't hurt anybody. You haven't hurt yourself. So you're nowhere in the FBI database. You're not there. So You can go buy a weapon. And I know that you don't, I know you're not right. So I do think that there should be something, and this may not be good, but it should be something like a a, a FBI hotline, which I know that there is, but this hotline should be, hey, my neighbor, um, they're not good. Let me tell you what they did the other day, you know, to try to be like a tip line so we can inform people in advance of people that may be a little mentally off before they go buy the weapon. So they can maybe like say, OK, go in and be evaluated or either have anybody over under 21 evaluated by a psychologist or a psychiatrist before you give them a license to purchase a weapon. How about that? That might might do something. I don't know. I think it's a solution. I'm all about solution. That just came in my head. Thank you. <laughs> but that, we got to do something because, again, uh, with the times and the way uh, the inflation, the economy, the scarcity, no food. The, the people going to start coming into your house and taking everything you got. And I don't know how they're going to do it. They probably, they're not going to knock on the door. So, you know, you know, what security boss, as you're saying this, it just made me think about this, like the, the mental health of our country after all this stuff, like we, I, I can't think of the last time we naturally, we had a break from something crazy happening. It's like, it's just nonstop. And I'm concerned with the mental health of this country at, at large. And then people, Put on top of that, what you just said, people are frustrated and scared and what how they going to make bills do this kind of stuff turns people into into monsters. And I'm you, concerned. Desperation. Sir, hell, was that you? That was you last. You remember about a month ago, I said, y'all, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was going to eat. I was going to ride because it was one hundred and nine dollars worth of gas. I put it, and you said it was one hundred and ten for you. I was one hundred and twenty two. Do you know that's devastating? That's devastating to some people to have to put in one hundred and twenty two dollars worth of fuel into your vehicle. I mean, you definitely make a decision whether you should eat or you should go to work because you can't really. So that kind of stuff. Now, I do. I do have noticed that the gas has gone down a bit, but that kind of stuff right there will make you depressed. I saw a girl today crying because she said she just needed a break from bills. And, and I'm like, babe, girl, I can't give you no break because I. 
it's, it's not me. And she was like, I, you know, I know, but it was just, she was just going through it with being depressed because she was working. She was like, I don't feel like going to work, but I know I got to go because if I miss work, I've missed a whole days of work. And you know, you can't miss what $150, $200 out of your check. Absolutely. So that is going to cause people to become desperate, hungry. And when people are desperate, they do desperate things. And that is just the way it's going. If something doesn't change. So. Absolutely. That is true. Okay, so that's enough of that. <laughs> it's not like it get any better, though. Okay, it's been very hot. There has been a thousand, there's a thousand people died of the heat wave in Portugal and Spain. Did you hear about this? A thousand people have died due to the heat. A thousand. Wow, I did not hear about this, but I can imagine. It's been over 100 degrees, and it's been 100 degrees in my state, too, and I know it's been over 100 where you are also, but a thousand people have died in Portugal and Spain. Are these are these elders or this just a mix of ages? Uh, they saying it probably they, they didn't put out different ages, but I'm assuming it's a mix and probably people that are working that are in the workforce, you know, having to actually. Yeah. Um, but they did not give a, a breakdown. Oh, I didn't see one. So I got two more. How do I want to do this? I got this next one is a little crazy, but I got to get your opinion on it. This one is, is uh, happened in Etna Mahan Correctional Woman's Prison. You hear about this? The woman got two women pregnant in the prison. I heard about that. First of all, like, this is ghetto and ratchet, but I was curious, like, how in the world is this happening? Because you know that it's very, it's highly dangerous, very dangerous to put a transgender woman in a man's prison, even though she's a man. I have a question. Now, this is where it got confusing. So I thought it wasn't fully trans until there was a, a, a sex change. Are we saying that you can be that without the, the actual change? Like the, the, like the staff doesn't look at that? No, yeah, no, no. The the trans part is your exterior. It's how you carry yourself. It's what you um. What do they say? I I what do you, what do they call it? I relate to or I how you, how you identify you, as what you thank you so much. What you identify as is who you are. Per 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 per. But just in case you got a penis, you might want to use it. Cause you know, right. guess what though? Now I don't know if y'all know this because we haven't heard anything from her in a long time. But um, what's uh gosh. The, the Caucasian woman or man that won Bruce Jenner, Bruce Jenner, you know, Caitlyn Bruce Jenner. Sorry about that. Caitlin Jenner. Yeah. Kate, clip this. Caitlin Jenner. Remember Caitlyn. you think back. Caitlin says she loved her penis. I never. Oh, I'm, let me go research. This. I didn't hear that. This was said. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah. She, she, oh, you, do you think that she's had the removal? I'm confused. I'm questioning <laughs> the meaning of life. I'm questioning the meaning of life. I didn't know this. If she's had it removed, then she's had it in recent years. But initially, she did not want to get. She she enjoyed her. She her, you know, they were one. Mm. <laughs> Listen. I'm sorry. I'm just doing a little research real quick. I didn't know this. I'm I'm, I'm just looking. You know. You know. Time has gone by really quick. Back then, she she liked her. You know. A he they them. They liked it. Yeah, she liked it. She was not getting rid of it. That's a very dangerous surgery, too, probably. So it was probably some some fear into doing that. But what? <laughs> I'm sorry. It just, when I hear things like it, I just came to a security boss. I don't know if we'll, we'll talk later. I, I don't. I'm, I'm all confused. I didn't know this. I did not know this. Yeah. But but listen, it, it don't get no better than the woman getting two other women pregnant in the prison right don't get no better than that right yes yeah, i saw um a post and it suggested um that it was involuntary so it was it was it was it looked like um the the guy came in there and he you know took advantage and i'm not sure how this whole thing played out wait a bit are you insinuating grape I don't want to. I'm just saying it. I heard this on the more um, ghetto news. So I'm taking it with a grain of salt. But there's a whole lot of stories that's that's swirling around about how this happened. And what, what they're saying is they're advocating for this is why we don't want, 
you know, people who have not transitioned to be in the women's presence. So I think it's a narrative that they're using, but there's a couple of stories swirling around. Well, let me say this. He, she, she has transitioned and she knew what she was doing. S security boss, please. So, so when we say transition, we're talking about the way we identify, not with the, the tools we have. Is that not what we're saying? Tools, because listen, I think only women, oh, let me think. I'm going to say this right. I think only men that identify as, no, I'm doing it wrong. Only women, only women that identify as men usually maybe go through that complete transition. You know what I mean? I mean, removal, replacement and stuff like that. The opposite way. You get what I mean? I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this whole conversation. Men, I'm just yeah. uncomfortable right now. <laughs> you are comfortable. Listen, men, I don't know. I, have, I haven't done a study. I'm not going to lie. But I don't hear of many men removing their male part. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say it like that. Most of them quite enjoy their male part. B. Rose uh, gave us a, a visual. <laughs> what? Is, <laughs> no. Is that mm. an eggplant with an egg? <laughs> <laughs> you silly. That's a very vivid description of what we're talking about. Listen, it's it's hard to follow, but but, but wait a minute though. Let's just think really good about this because she just she she just got two people pregnant in the prison. Now they're gonna have them two babies. And this is this is our next generation. What what what, what it's something what, what we're gonna do? And you know, nothing's gonna happen, right? Well, yeah. I think they're saying that they're going to move her, him. Okay, let's, let's, here we go. Let's ask this question. Because he, she she was doing a male act as a male, and at that particular moment, she was identifying as a male. Should she be put in a male's prison at this point? Because she was identifying as a male in those days. Yes, I'm not sure. It's, it, for me personally, I would say yes, but I do know that if she is in a prison. Maybe she's going to be subjected to a level of violence because of that, of her particular, how she identifies. So it's, it's, it's crazy either way. Well, not her new identity. Remember she was identifying as daddy over there. So if she take daddy over to the men's prison, she'd probably be okay. Wait, so I'm lost. Okay. Hold on. I need to rethink all of this. So how, how did they, this person started off as a man? Yes. Okay. But she identifies as a woman. So if you just looked at her in her every day, she looks just like a woman. Everything but her male parts. So when she's in prison with these other women, even though she's identifying as a woman, she's using her male part that can have produced sp sperm and impregnate two women. And she's done that at the same time. Or, you know what I'm saying? Both women are pregnant. So now it's like she used her male. She did use her male. It, it's not that she disrobed and became exteriorly a man, but she used her male part and she impregnated them. So they didn't put her in the male prison, though, because males, even though she had a male part, she was uh, exteriorly a woman. And they they they're against that in the male's prison. But but what now? Should there be a prison for just transgender women? I think that would be safe, honestly. Because like when I think about that, I personally know somebody who who's who changed. Um, I'm, I'm talking about literally grew up a street over and came to uh, to, to Texas and something happened. I don't know the full details, but I do know that that person was deleted. So there is there was real violence. And so like when it comes to this kind of things, I think that's the solution. It's got to be a completely separate edifice because it won't be another 50 to 100 years before this is normal, normal. You know what I'm saying? That's well, what wait, I think. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you saying this is going to be normal? I think so. Jesus, okay, I don't be going to glory by the end because there's no way that I, no, it's not, it can't, no. Normal? Like, no. I mean, now people are going to do what they do, but when you say normal, I'm thinking like, you know, no. Mm -mm. Um, I, think the, I think the way that the world is going, this is just what I see. The way that the world is going, because there's no standard there. There's nothing. It's everything is fluid. And that whole fluidity 
just the, based off of the trends, what they're teaching in schools, what they're promoting, I think this, in terms of a culture, is going to be around for a long time. I truly believe that. Okay, so then my next question is, do you think they should be able to have children? See, I, I, my brain ain't been, I got to formulate these thoughts, but in, in, in terms of their human rights, if, if they're coming up under the law of the land, I mean, they, they're people. So as long as you're a human being, you are afforded certain unalienable rights. So I would have to say yes. Now, okay. what the, if, if we're talking about morally, then my stance well, is I'm different. I'm trying to figure out who should be able to have the child because I'm trying to identify with what, what, you know, like, okay, but then would we have a lot of kids with no fathers? You know what? I believe I don't even think the term mother and father is going to stick around as well. I'm not sure if you if you notice it, but the, the terms like, you know, man and woman, like those terms that define gender, they're trying to even get away with things like that as well. So I think what are, they, what are they using instead of man and woman? You no, know, uh, they uh, they them, you know, a neutral terms. Okay. Yeah, hmm. if, if with with kids being in small schools, I've heard some stuff that I cannot believe that I'm hearing, and they're pushing this to kids like as early as third and fourth grade. Um, this kind of this kind of talk. So I didn't know this until we went to my kids' school and you start to listen to the stuff that they are being introduced to. So it really runs deep and it's even in the schools. So stuff that parents don't know about, that because we are working stuff, their kids are exposed to this kind of stuff on a daily basis. Now, is that called that social, uh, is it social emotional learning, that SEL? Is that, what, is that a part of that? I, I, I think so. I think that might be what it is. But I'll have to ask my wife. She's the teacher. I'm not sure, but I think that that's what it is. I think it's social emotional learning. Um, and it also has little sound bites in there that says it teaches your kids how to um, deal with um, their emotions and responding to different people and accepting of all, you know, things of that nature. And it's kind of, you kind of look at you. Listen, it sounds so good, but you, I'm thinking, wait a minute, is there some brainwashing going on in this little right I here? Think, I think you're hitting on that. I think that's right. So I think a couple of things. We need more men to teach. That's number one. And then I think humble sensation just said the key word homeschool. I think that this is a thing. I think that if people want to protect their kids, take education into your own hands and homeschool your kids, especially yeah. because a lot of parents aren't even involved in schools. They're just not there, not, not in PTA meetings. They're just not, unless they're in private school. So if you can, nuclear families, pull your kids out, get a curriculum and homeschool your kids. I was homeschooled and it works. Yeah. So listen, guys, if y'all haven't heard of this social emotional learning, I think y'all need to look into it really deep. I think it was a it might have been in Texas. It might have been a, a school in Texas that uh, was someone was protesting against it because of some things that they were teaching the kids that did not sound totally correct. It was you know, it sounds real good. It has like five components. Y'all need to check up. Y'all need to look at this. I don't have any small kids. But y'all need to look at this because remember, I'm always talking against the world and what the world is offering. And you can protect your children because you can definitely bring them home. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily pushing any particular Christian school, but guess what? Be involved in whatever it is. Make sure you understand what your children are being taught on a daily basis. We love everyone, but there's still we still have to teach what is real and what, what is not because you want your children to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And, and be purposeful for being here um, because what we just talked about, and it gets worse. This is the last one. And then we're going to jump into the show uh, goes to what we're talking about now. Sir Hill, I know you heard about the 14 year olds um, killing that 73 year old man with those cones. I did. I sure did. Now it was three o'clock in the morning. I used to have to be inside the house by the time the street lights came on. What time were you allowed in? What was your I, latest? Once I started to see it getting dark, before the street lights come on, I better be in before those came in. Wow. So when we have our young people now are so smart, per se, that they're being allowed to basically raise themselves for whatever reason, for whatever reason. And we may not ever know, but they're committing murder. y'all. Now, I don't know why the man was out there either, but obviously they had something. He had something that these young folks wanted. 
I don't know what it is. I don't know what keeps people out at three o'clock in the morning, but I do know there's a whole lot of things that go on. Y'all already know after 12, a whole lot of stuff just kicks off for whatever reason. So make sure when your kids are going over to their friends' houses or whatever, that there's some chaperone or grown folks there. I better yet, just keep your kids at home. Have more than one so they can have some entertainment. You know, because you don't, you, you know, the days of spending the night over your friend's house is just gone and done. You don't want to do that anymore. But I just think this is a tragic story that a 14 year old, and this is not, has been, hasn't been the only one, but this is the most recent one. There was one more and then we're going to get started. There was one more where these uh, 14 and 15 year old girls stole a car. You remember that one? Stole the car and then killed the man accidentally, you know, joy riding. Now they are ruthless. They don't have no fear. There is no fear of anything. And um, not that I want kids to be fearful, but damn, do you steal a car at 14? Do you think you can drive? I mean, where's all this coming from? How can I just do any and everything at 14? Kids need to be fearful. Fear that it's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing, but I get what you're saying too. I, I agree with you. Now, see, I'm a grown woman. I fear things, you know, like, they don't fear anything, but I know that where this is coming from, because, you know, uh, they used to, I can't remember what pre, what president's wife it was. You know, she had the whole campaign with your brain on drugs. Do you remember that? What was that Carter's wife? Uh, I think it was Carter. You no, know, I'm not friend, sure. Was that who it was when she used to do that, have her little campaign with the brain on drugs? I used to be like, look, if I ever try to get high, that's going to be my brain. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Yep. It was Reagan. Thank you, Jenny. Listen. I saw the brain, the, the eggs frying. I was like, oh, that could just be me. I, I'm going to keep my brain intact. So that was enough for me. But today's kids, they ordering, uh, what's that, fentanyl? They ordering fentanyl from the drug dealer on the phone. They got an app and everything. They're doing everything. They're smart. They say they're bringing it to the house. They say it's 225 kids, children under 16, dying per day of fentanyl poisoning a day. 225 a day. So... Violence and drugs. Parents, get your kids and stop having kids you can't take care of. I think it's one of the things we got to talk about. Like we just having kids, we just put them out there and then they part of our lives. If you are not prepared to raise kids, do not have them because you're going to set them up for failure and then they're going to become a menace to society. So take care of your kids. If you can be married with kids, do that. And this is to me why it's important to have a good family structure. Because when they come from a, a solid home, this is less likely to happen. Ain't to say that it won't happen, but it's less likely to happen. And I think that this is a crime. Now, we can, we can act like it's not true and we can act like we're progressive, but that old school stuff worked. And when kids were afraid because daddy was going to get them or mama was going to get them. Now, we, we, we talk about, you know, we didn't have freedoms and stuff. We weren't out there beating people with cones. We went out there disrespecting our elders. We knew when to be in. We were safer. It's like today we're more free, and we're more we're more in prison at the same time in our, our our stupidity. So raise your kids, mother. Raise your kid, daddy. Raise your kids. Otherwise, it's gonna create problems out here, like we're seeing today. You know what? It used to be a time when mom or dad or both would lock the house down. You remember that? Mm -hmm. make sure that everybody was in all the doors were locked and all the lights were off before they actually went to bed. That is gone. I don't know. We got to do something though. Cause this is, this is, this is our examples. I don't, you know what kids got so much on their mind. I don't even know how they go to school. How, how do you go to school and, and learn and sit and watch a teacher teach, try to teach you something with all this extra stuff of luggage and baggage and thoughts on your shoulders. This is heavy. When That's I went to point. school, school used to be so fun. <laughs> school used to be like the best you get to see your friends you have fun you do your sports it was just good now i can imagine that it's not that it's not even a good good place to be you know security boss you said something earlier about the video games and i don't play very much today i just i just don't i, I bought a game and I'm, like, I'm gonna play this playstation 4 i gave it to my sons I, I don't have time for this right but i thought about when i was a kid i, I had peace you know what i mean i had peace i had imagination these kids are in like games that, that I think are too old for them. And then when they're not on the game, they're on a phone, right? If they're not on a the phone, they're on a the television. It's like they're never in real life uh, today. And I think that that social development, a lot of our kids like that social development, which is why it's easy for them not to care about other people because they don't have to. They're married to the screens. But so here we taking it for granted because 
the part that you're missing is they never had anything else. So that is their realization. That's true. They never, they never had the telephone with the cord that went through all the house. They never had regular TV or black and white TV or what have you. I might be telling my age now, excuse me, y'all forget that. Y'all don't know nothing about black and white TVs. Me either. I just heard somebody say that, not me. So if you if you've only lived in the virtual digital age, everything around you would have to be virtual and digital. We can't even I can't even imagine it because let me tell you something. When I used to teach class, right, I used to teach driver's ed and I used to tell the mothers, please don't bother your kids. We're talking about driving cars, right? Real cars. Don't call your kids on the cell phone during this two hours because we're going to be driving the car. Now, is that, that's a small request, right? Do you know how the, the mamas used to call these boy children like, like the children could do something? And I, I just got so upset one day. I said, let me just talk to you. And she was like, well, I said, when I was younger, if the house was burning down, the mothers had to go, the mothers of the fathers had to go to the front office and they had to call us over the income, intercom. But guess what? They didn't do that because what in the world could a young person do about the house burning down? That's just more stress. I didn't need the stress of the house burning down on me while I'm in school. I didn't need that. So Absolutely. guess what? Let her stay at school. And at the end of the day, I'll go pick her up and explain to her that we had a house fire or whatever. Dearly beloved. Why did I need to have? Why would you call your child in the middle of the day, knowing they're at school and tell them, um, well, dad, you know, Dad is sick. He's in the hospital. What, what, why would you burden that child with that? You know, it's That's a good question. We, we just don't think about it. It's just we just share so much with our children. It's like that they, you know, they got an opinion of what needs to go on. You know, like they paying bills. An opinion. Is, Security boss, you just brought back memories. In opinion, I didn't get an opinion until I was a grown adult and I had to ease up into that opinion. You're right. We're burdening our kids. Kids can't just be kids today. No, they have opinions. I mean, I can see you, you allowing your child to have a conversation with you about things that they do. But I'm talking about the grown up stuff, like what's going in the house. How about this? What are we eating tonight? I think we should have. Well, I don't want that. I want and what? Four different meals at one table. What? No, we're not doing that. But anyway. Security boss, just one more thing. I just you, you bring it back moments of of peace and tranquility. It used to be when I was home and if adults came, I had to go into a different room because my Absolutely. mother would say, "Grown folks are talking." Now kids be sitting there with grown folks talking. It don't make sense to me. And then when the kids start acting grown, the parents act confused. I'm like, these kids, the light bill is in your kid's name. You done made them an adult. Did you it's say ridiculous. the light bill is in their name? It, it, I, I know some folks, I know some kids who got bills in their name. It, are they paying them? They they tell me they're paying on them, right? They're not paying them. Oh, God. Don't put their credit being used. <laughs> <laughs> that must be an old trick. <laughs> but listen, listen, the only time we were able to go into the room with the adults was when they made us come in there and sing for them, dance for them, and stuff like that. Otherwise, we had to be in the other room, too. So you're exactly right. But now the kids are a part of the conversation and, um, you know, they're actually helping out, helping to explain what's going on, because there is such a divide between what's virtual and what is now to what the parents may or may not know. There's such a divide. Uh, even in the conversations, because even with me, listen, this is funny. Y'all don't laugh at me. I got a comment one day and it said, um, BW, y'all don't laugh. But it took me like two days to figure out what BW was. Does everybody here know what BW means in the comment section? <laughs> so, yeah, you weren't supposed to laugh. You, you, What you laughing at, here? I know somebody done got you one day, too. But BW, y'all took me two whole days, y'all, to find out. And I told this story before. BW, I did not know what BW was, y'all. I, it was crazy. <laughs> it took me two days. And then somebody said, uh, black woman. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> oops. Dearly beloved. Two whole days. So there is a divide. I get it. But I'm just saying, I'm like, because you know, I use words. I, 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 <laughs> somebody said black woman. <laughs> Mr. C, that's what I, that's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying there is a there is a vast difference in the way we communicate. So 
maybe sometimes the parents are needing the children for that reason. But we definitely need to keep it PG if we're involving them in any way, um, because the stress of all that we have now, you know, the rents going up to, you know, rent on a two bedroom apartment, two thousand dollars, them being evicted. That's that all goes on the uh, security of a child. You know that that kids can't learn well with that. You know, they get, sure they get all nervous of what, where am I going to sleep tonight and all that, all that on it. So I get it. Can I add to that one more thing? Sure. So to parents out there who have children who might be dealing with behavioral issues, sometimes it's not a learning disability. And I'll say this because we went through this in my own life with my four children. Now we came from the projects we talking about. And so up and up North, you got roaches. Down south, you got cockroaches. There's a difference. So we came living in a project in the hood, and our kids' grades were suffering. It's terrible. And the, the apartments we lived in, Pete, there was drugs and stuff. You know, it, it took me a little time, but I moved my family out of that into a good school district. And the environment, what, what was a, a learning disability in one environment, is just they needed a new opportunity. So parents, be sure that you're part of your kid's education because sometimes schools will label your kids as, you know, having an emotional, you know, being emotionally disturbed or so on and so forth. But sometimes it's not that there's something wrong with your child. It's the environment. So make sure you put your kids in good places to learn because all the stuff that they don't talk to you about because they're not vocal, they feel everything even if they don't say it. So parents, be mindful of that and know that everything that they feel, if you're arguing with, with your spouse or with the, your father or your children or the mother, they feel all of that. Kids absorb every, everything and it impacts their ability to learn. So just be mindful of that. Absolutely. Oh, I heard that because sometimes it'll shut them down. It sure will. They'll, they'll get real quiet and, you know, when they're, when they're not talking or being active like a normal, what they would call a normal child, that is considered a disability. Mm, yep. Wow. Okay, so let's just get into it here. So the Manosphere has women confused. I have questions. All right. So listen, thank you so much, Sarhel, for being here. And I'm going to get started. This is all coming from me because on last Wednesday, myself and family values Jasmine, I know you out there in the chat. Y'all, if y'all have not yet, go over to Jasmine's channel, YouTube Family Values. Check her out. Listen, we're going to always give thumbs up to Jasmine. Jasmine has seven kids and one in the oven baking, right? She's doing it. So shout out to Jasmine. Family Values. So um, her and I were doing a show on Allie, Allie's platform, which is Real Fem Sapien. And it was called blended families. And, you know, we, we think in blended families. I'm not thinking anything more blended families. So I'm speaking of how initially I was a single mother for a time because I was supposed to be married to my child's father and vice versa. Uh, she had two kids and what have you. She got married to her husband. They've had six kids together. So anyway, we were just talking about that and, and it was good. And I myself was talking about we both were like seeing um, the second wives of, you know, men. I'm my husband's second wife and vice versa. But before we get started, Black Man Unfiltered, how are you doing? Thank you so much for your $10 super chat. And he says, welcome to SB Church where the wisdom is free <laughs> and the super chat and gift shop money goes to SB. Thank you, Sir Hill, so much for holding it down for your brother tonight. And you get the money line. Money line. All right, so here, show me what you got. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, surely you didn't learn that on the street. So who, um. Who I, took, I hired a professional. I hired a professional. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't get off the street, I'm telling you. So anyway, um, we talked about being our husband's second wives and, you know, this everything about blending our families and how it was. I didn't have much to blend because I only have one child, but um, Jasmine had two. And she was talking about how her husband, her current husband now embraced her two children. And we just talked about that, you know, and how we appreciate our husbands and basically everything that we do over here all the time. I always advocate for men. I appreciate men. I'm always talking about marriage, how to be the best version of yourself of yourself. And I'm always talking and speaking this way to women on about, about how to be wives and things of that nature. Now, my question to you is the fact that I speak about this, 
does that some kind of way indoctrinates me into a manosphere situation? I want to say this as succinctly as possible. Thank you. Yes, it does. Okay. Now, continue. Tell me why. Is it the fact? <laughs> the fact that you, see, if you, if you were saying things like, you know, men are trashed, men need to step up, men need to, alone, you'd be golden. You, you wouldn't have any criticism. It's the fact that you say that while you're saying, but there's some good men out here. There's some men who really want to be fathers. These men want to be loved. The biggest one you get pushed, the, this is, you, you trigger feminists when you say this. You trigger the feminists. The algorithm gets messed up when you say this. It's submit to your husband. Like I, I, I get up and I cook for my husband. So it's the fact that you have, it's sad to say this, that you have something good to say about men. That's what makes you part of the manosphere because men just want to be heard. And you are an advocate for that. Not only are you an advocate, but no one can say you're pandering. They can't say she's just doing that for super chat. She's just doing that for money. She's doing that for clout. No, because you successfully married. You've been doing this for 26 years. So that you're 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 airtight. And because of that, you're looked at as, as manosphere. Okay, so let me just say this. When I first came into the space, and even now, I know nothing about the manosphere. I know nothing about it. But as I've been you know, working in what I'm doing and working on my platform, I'm learning that the Manosphere advocates for men and it's it's a place where you all can go. Now, I don't know where that place is because we are we're definitely on the Internet. So it's anywhere, you you know, but this is a space where men can be men. Y'all can talk almost like the bar barbershop for men where y'all can go and talk. But it's all to make you a better people, you know, and you can complain about what, what not complain, but you can just talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. It. This is a space for men. But this is where the problem comes in. Where does this space reside? Because I did not sign up to be a part of the manosphere, right? What I'm talking to you all about and anyone else about women and men is my life. And the fact that I advocate for men is a plus plus for me because I do want men to be the best version of themselves. But I want the women to also be good and married also. So how do how do we keep this positive? and still exists right here at SB Nation. Because when we say we're in this space, I didn't sign up for a space. I just came to, in, to, to, I just came to um, YouTube. So how do I respect what you're doing, you know, or have people respect what I'm doing and also respect what they're doing, seeing that I don't know, <laughs> that I don't know what they're doing. You kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think what you do already, you, you're doing that. And when I say manosphere, I mean to people who don't know what manosphere, what, what it's for. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm black. I'm a black man. So, and I'm speaking about me. And so I'm manosphere. They're just oh. the way that it goes. So if you black, they, they categorize you. But you do a good job that you don't, you control conversations. And so when it's deviating to the left, you re-steer it and then you reiterate what the purpose of your channel and what you're doing is. So you do a really good job of that. And I, I haven't seen you go, go hard at any one body for the sake of going hard. It's a balance. So yours, you're, you're different. You know what I mean? So you're, you're different. But I think people lump you in because of two things. You're a black woman and you're speaking about black issues. And those issues happen to be advocacy of black men. So because of that, you get lumped in. Right. So this is so this is the issue that I'm having. Negativity has been chasing me. You know, I don't want to be chased by negativity because I happen to be a follower of Christ where I'm the person that gives grace. You know, so where if a woman is totally screwed up and made some mistakes, if I can appeal to her and let her know, sweetheart, you need to account for whatever it is you're doing. Let me show you how to be a wife. Let me show you how to do this. And she says, you know what? You're right. Let me do this. I'm going to give her that grace, just like my husband gave me, per se, because I am, I did have a child, you know, and I did marry a man that makes six figures or what have you. He didn't back then, but I was willing to struggle love or whatever needed to happen to get us to the place that we are now. And it's 26 years later. So there's got to be something that I'm missing because I meet you and I meet black men and, and Shannon here. I don't know if Shannon's a part of man, but I meet so many men in these spaces and y'all are the nicest, most respectable men that I could ever meet. 
and 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 y'all explain things to me. I have no issues with it. But then it's a flip side to it. And then the first thing I hear is, oh, street boss, don't worry about that. That's red pill. But wait a minute. What do you mean that's red pill? I don't know about these pills. Stop. <laughs> we, well, wait a minute. Before we go on, let me say this. Lou Casely, how are you? It's good to see you. And thank you so much for your $5 super chat. And she says, it's the pair character cheerfully blowing uh, a party horn. I don't see it, but I got you. Thank you so much for your uh, $5 super chat. Oh, and also before we go on, it is Simon Hectic. Thank you so much for your five dollars super check. Also, thank you for that. So I'm just wondering, and and you don't have to get into this, but again, I'm missing something because I meet so many men, adult men, and they are just so positive. And I thought that that was the manosphere because you have a place to share, and and you all can feed into each other. You know, give each other that balance that's needed, or what have you. And then you can bring it back out here into this this atmosphere, per se, and into your homes and you preach nuclear families, not preach, but you teach that. And that's where we are. That's what I thought the manosphere was about. But then when I say, you know, when when you disrespect another man to see men disrespecting other men, I'm thinking, but wait a minute, y'all, that can't be the manosphere. That doesn't that doesn't that doesn't align with what I'm hearing the manosphere is about. How can two men disrespect each other? They have a whole, you know, this is about them. Why would they be disrespecting each other? So can you help me out a little bit on what I'm seeing or am I just confusing something again? I don't think you're wrong. Uh, I, I think that with anything, any type of sphere of any sort, you're going to have some back and forth. It's just the nature of stuff. And most men, if there are problems and we're mature, men can get over that kind of stuff. But I think people lump manosphere with everything. And there's layers to this. OK, so you have you do have the deep level manosphere, the red pill content. And this comes from a couple of different things. And it's really the openness of the eyes of female nature at, at just at large. This is men know how the majority of women operate the hypergamy. Right. And then you go deeper with men who have suffered, you know, divorce and got screwed in court, you know, child support court and so on and so forth. So a lot of these men have experienced some real life stuff which has driven them to just be open and aware. Doesn't mean that they don't care about women. It just means that they're the, the pedestalization of women and this fairy tale idea of women, they no longer live by that, right? So that's one. The so what part, you start, let's slow down. Sure. You say open and aware. So are you saying that all women look the same? No, so if, if, you, if you come from a particular context, I can make all women look the same. And I think a lot of men have, that that's what it is, but that's because of the context of their life. And I don't I don't want to 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 minimize their experience because depending on where you are, a, 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 the type of woman can appear the same depending on where you are. So I do want to give some respect to that. But if if we're just answering it generally, then we know that it's not a reflection of all women. But I will say there are some traits that I see among most women, right? You know, and sometimes it could be that selfishness or that self-righteousness, the inability to apologize when they're wrong, the, the blaming always having to be the victim. So even if a woman doesn't have all those negative things, there does seem to be traces of certain characteristics that a lot of women do possess, whether they are, quote unquote, good women or not. OK, so wait, wait right there for me, because. You mentioned before you spoke about those the, that that group of men. You mentioned that they were possibly awake and abused by past relationships, right? Absolutely. Okay, so is it possible that the women that they're meeting meeting or are interacting with have the same issue? I was that that would be the easy answer to say yes. Okay. But there's a couple things. Again. So think about this, a young boy who's raised by by a you know a single mother, right? Right. And this single mother, she's the type of chaotic woman that a lot of men speak about. Okay. So this young boy hears, yo, you know, yo, yo, daddy left me. He ain't no good man, you know, meaning to step up and help raise you. All, all the whole, the whole thing. So he grows up trying to prove something to his mother by being a good man. Right. And, but what he doesn't realize is he's being conditioned to attract the same kind of woman that his mama groomed him to be. So so it's it's almost like he's prof he, the way he's raised is a prophecy on what he's going to get and it's going to be this vicious cycle. And so I think that's a big thing and so right men go into this world they get the woman who does the same thing and a lot of men are trying to fix within their mother 
you know, they're trying to fix it with their girlfriend. And it's just this battle. And I think a lot of men get wounded in that. And I think people think red pill, it just happens. And this is my perspective, just in romantic relationships. And sometimes you don't get real pill because of a girlfriend or wife. Sometimes it could be because of the, the women in your family relationships. Open your eyes to see that you're just being used or you're not being respected. So being real pill doesn't just happen in romantic relationships. It can happen in a multiple different ways. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I understand that. I do. Okay. So now, it, okay, that's red pill. Now, is there something else? Is there another, because you mentioned them being a, like one part of it. Is there another part? that? Now, I'll be honest with you. It's too many pills out there. You okay. got the blue pill, the pink pill. The, it's a lot of pills, but I think the, in terms of the, the polarity between that, you got the pills that men who eventually want to be married. And then you got the red pill men who probably never will be. Okay, so, so listen. Extremes. Okay, that's good because that's where I was going to go. I was going to ask: Are the red peel men are they wanting to be married? You're saying no. Yeah, in in this current state, red pill likely not. And if they do, they won't get married under the guise that this is going to be peachy. It's going to be sunshine and beauty. They're not getting married under that condition. They know that this is a, it's transactional. So they're going into it with that mindset and they're preparing themselves with things like prenuptial agreements and so on and so forth. So it's not that they've closed off to marriage is the Disneyfication of marriage that they've turned off to. So we need a healing. That's what it needs. It needs a heal. Somebody needs to be healed. <laughs> Dearly beloved. <laughs> need a healing I, out there. It sound like. <laughs> I would say yes, healing, but like what you're doing, I think is great because I, so if, if men get healed and the women are the same, Think, oh, think about it this way. So, no, no, no. I'm not leaving the women out. We already know women need to be healed. I'm just saying, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know anything about red pill, but I'm saying instead of functioning in brokenness, I would like to see any and everybody be healed. If it's a woman that's from her traumas or if it's a man that has family traumas, because that is so real, all of that, I still would like to see a community healed versus like, for instance, what, I, what I've seen a lot of, and I'm just using this person as an example because everybody can relate to this person, is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is living his life. And, and uh, just to be totally honest, I don't care nothing about Russell Wilson, Wilson. It's just he's the best example. But because he's living his life and he appears to be happy, but he's with a woman that appears to be um, one that he shouldn't have been with for whatever reasons, right? He looked over and passed that. And married this woman and she does whatever she does, you know, twerks, videos, whatever. And, and my my I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, he's still married and he appears to be happy. But the fact that he does that, that I hear people calling him a simp. Um, they talk really negative about him all the time. And I happen to think that Russell is, seems and appears to be a good dude. Now, whatever relationship he has with his wife, I can't explain it, but that's what they do. I just think he's a modern man and I think modern men do modern things uh, or what have you. But what do you, you do? You understand what I'm saying? I, I don't get the disrespect when I am when a person has made a choice to do what it is they want to do, especially as men. Security boss, it pains my heart to say what I'm getting ready to say. Don't let it, it pain. Go it ahead. Pains. So, Russ, I think he's a good guy. I think he's a really good guy. I really yeah. do. Yeah. But he sometimes look we if your wife is out there twerking, what man in his right mind wants his now listen, he can be supportive of her. He, you know, he can appreciate her. But what man wants his wife out there for the world to see her shaking the yams? Okay, Don't so no man want this. Okay, so if you put it like that, are you saying that everything that in our normal everyday homes? Everything that our wives, our husband, our wives, everything that wives do, um, if somebody knew they do it, would be acceptable. And just in our normal, regular day, regular homes, if it's if it's being mean, cussing you out, whatever, just you know, regular, just regular people. If someone, if the world knew it, would it be acceptable? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like for instance, um, oh, I can't use. It. Let's just say we knew somebody. <laughs> And his wife was a drunk or she had a drinking problem, um, but it had been concealed for a long period of time. Right. Or, or, you know, but once you found out about it, 
what would you say to that? I mean, because I don't know why he's, I don't know why it's okay for her to be sitting up there twerking. I don't get it either. I'm, I'm with you on that. But what I'm saying is Russell may be there. He may be sitting, all this might be for us because we know he knows we're going to talk about it, but he may be right there in the same environment as her when she's, when he's twerking. I don't know. I can't even answer it. I wouldn't do that. I don't think it's a good representation, but he allows her to do it. And they're still very much so married. And he seems to be very happy with her. Now you're saying he's a weak man because I think, well, you didn't say it. I don't want to put words in your mouth. What were you going to say? He's what? It, it looks a little weak to me. And I'm just being honest with you. And there's a borderline between you supporting your, your wife. But I think when you get married, there's a certain way you carry yourself. And the way... The way a wife moves. Now, look, I'll say this. Let me say this. Well, I got a great example. You, we, we, if we meet Unc Boss in real life, he has the highest level of respect. Like, right. I've never seen him. I don't know. To, it, it, to me, he's like he's like Jesus' brother because all I hear is the voice. I've never seen him with my eyes. Right. But the way you carry yourself, the way that you conduct yourself, the way that you talk about love and respect and honor and so on and so forth, he has the highest respect. Right. Because of the way you present yourself, wives have a significant influence on how their men are viewed. And so the way she's conducting herself makes him look like he's, his house is out of order. Mm. I hear what you're saying, but I think we say that because they are so highly in our face. But I think there's a lot of things that go on within marriage that, that we don't know about that would represent the same thing or that we're doing within our homes that are not good representations of that marriage or that man, but we just don't see it. And I'm saying to you, Russell seems to be in a good place. Now, I, again, I wouldn't be twerking either, but whatever, for whatever reason, they must have some sort of agreement that, you know, what have you, but he seems like he's in a good place. Now I get what you're saying, but so due to that, we get to call him a simp. Is that what you're saying? Now, see, I, I wouldn't call him that because I don't think that he is one. I think that some of his, if, if he was my brother, I'd be like, bro, get your girl, bro, get your, but he really is a classy dude. And I can't call a classy dude who's who honors his wife, definitely takes care of his kids and responsibilities. I can't fix my mouth to call this man a simp. Does some of his actions look weak? Absolutely. But to escalate that to say he's a simp, I can't say that. Now, if you ask me about Will Smith, he's a simp. But if Will Russell Smith, Wilson, Will I can't how, say that. How, wait a minute, what did Jada do besides just act crazy? Everything. Everything okay. Will is a... I, 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 listen, we just, listen, we're just having a conversation. I really don't like to talk to people about people in their business because I really don't know. It's just, it's just, a, I'm just saying a big problem in our community is a lack of respect. It's a huge problem. But before we go there, let me read this super chat. Um, Typing, thank you so much. It says feminists see pro traditionalism as po pro patriarchy. Thank you so much for that. And let's see. We had another super chat I need to take care of before we get Mr. Awesome. Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing awesome today. Oh my goodness. Let's see, Mr. Awesome. Thanks so much for your five dollars. Super chat. He says red pill slip simply is the concept of the unfiltered, often uncomfortable truth of the world. This applies to every aspect of life, not just relationships. Oh, right. Now, now, see, I'm going to question that, though, because I don't believe that red pill always equals truth. I think a lot of red pill is your opinion. If, if what I'm saying, the red pill I'm hearing is a lot having to do with opinion. There's a lot of opinion um, that I see, but I see what you're saying, but I've been hearing a lot of opinion. So, hey, what you think about that? I think every man needs to have a red pill experience. Oh, he needs to have. I got you. Oh, so that so to have the truth about that experience. Yeah, I agree. OK, I got you on that one. I see now. I see. what. I, he yeah, so I think when, when it comes to red pill, it t to me, it, it really is you in a position because you want to know truth as it is. And I think the reason why people it becomes like black for people like is because you've been lied to all your life. Like you, the, the movies and the stuff you're taught, even the stuff you might learn from your religious circle about life and the way it works, even about how it is, you, how you're going to be blessed. Some of that time you, you, you're fed lies. And when you open your eyes to seek truth, I do think everybody, particularly men, have to have a red pill experience. But Sir Hell, you're making me, where does truth come from? Experience. No, 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 no. 
the basis of truth comes from what? Where did we get truth from? You, are you saying truth and perception are not the same or one and the same? No, no, no. I just think that in other in order for truth to be revealed, you've got to have an experience that one awakens the question to seek the truth and then the revelation of that truth. And that comes by way of experience. Yeah, but I'm saying, hold on, let me get his $10 super chat. Thank you, Mr. Scotland, the Sheba dog shaking his hips saying, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You get the money line. So Jenny here says she thinks truth is truth. It has nothing. Oh my God. I just lost it. Jenny. I'm sorry. I lost your comment. Truth comes from knowledge. I think that, and someone else says truth. Uh, let's see. Y'all I'm sorry. The chat is going. Truth comes from knowledge. Thank you so much for that. Jenny. What do you think about that? Sir Hale truth comes from knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's like it's like you get knowledge, you get stuff. You got to find a way to know what it's like. A it's like you 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 get knowledge every single moment of the day, knowing how to filter stuff out and make sense of it. Again, like I said, you have to have experience to know what truth is. Like if you if we're asking me from a faith perspective, I believe truth comes from God. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, we're on the same page now. But yeah, I was just sure. wondering where somebody was getting the truth, and it was being perceived as a. A red pill because to me that that's more perception because like you said a moment ago if i'm over here and a group of people are acting this way over here then that is perceived to be their truth did uh, did i say that right or did i mess it up completely from you what you said uh, no i think that's i think so but for me I, I think of truth as something objective so the whole like you, you'll never hear me my truth is this or your truth is that i don't believe none of that I think there's an objective it's truth. truth. And if anything other than objective truth really is, is it's it's it may be a well founded opinion, but it's that it is an opinion. Mm, I think truth is truth. But again, I have my own I have a belief system though. See what what okay now listen, does truth work with individuals that have no belief system? I'm, I'm sorry, say it again. Does truth work the same with individuals with no belief system? Objective truth, yes. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. So that brings us to the okay. So we're going to moving on. Okay. So now that's the red pill, and you guys are several other pills that we're not going to go through. So we're moving on. So what else? Okay. So what else is it as far as the spaces? Yes, it works on all humans. Thank you, Shannon. So um shout out to Shannon Ross in the building. So now that we um Shannon, though, is truth perspective or is truth truth? Because you know how we can get, you know, because some people be having truth and, and, and I, I'll i never see it as truth. But they always tell me, hey, SB, because you didn't grow up over there, you may not understand that. But does that make it right? Or is that truth? Exactly, Sir Hill. Um, it's very objective. So I'm still, y'all, I'm, truth is truth to me. I'm not a gray person. I don't do well in the gray. Can I ask you a question? White. I'll give you an example. So. There was a couple cases, and I don't want to make this a dark story. Good grief, but I'm giving an example. So no, you know, when I went around the world, and a bunch of people been deleted, kids been acting up, um, <laughs> tra men, men done had babies. Come on, what else can you add? I mean, come on. So, so I'm thinking, like, you know, you know, you you hear like you watch certain movies, right? And yeah. you know, there's somebody who's hired to, to as a, you know, as a contract to take somebody out. I just watched this movie called I think it was a uh, Memory. It's a great movie uh, with uh, 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 Liam Nelson. Any, anyway, the movie is called Memory. And so in this, he was hired as a contract person to execute certain people. Right. And in this movie, people got mad at him because their truth is he's the one who did it. But he was hired by somebody with a different agenda. So it depends on how you are looking at it. The, the truth for some person was this person did the thing he executed. But the real truth is he only did this because somebody else planned it. I'm just saying when you scale back a little bit, you get to see truth from a from a, 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 a from a from a higher place instead of just what you're close to. If that makes any sense. Yes. No, I see exactly what you're saying, but. I agree, I'm because I'm uh, because to me, truth is still truth. If Liam killed him for whatever reason, he did it, even though he was a contract, even though he had a contract to do so, he did the deed now. 
he may not get charged with the full extent of the uh, crime because maybe he had to do it to save his own life or something of that nature. Or maybe he had some kind of justifications or whatever for doing what he did. Who knows? But if he pulled the trigger, or the contract was fulfilled by him. He did it. He did. He did. But it. Do you see what I'm saying? If, if it was in a court of law, they wouldn't just stop at him. They want to know who sent you to do this. Because the truth, the truth is encompassing. And if, if we just take him, well, that that's your truth. But your no, truth what's is not this. the question though? Uh, what is truth? No, what would be the it all depends on what would be the question. You know, you said in a court of law, what what are what is he answering to? Is he answering to the conspiracy or, or why'd you do it? Or is he answering for the the absolute the absolute deletion of? I mean, we I don't we anyway, we don't have to go that way no more. Hold on for a minute. Let's do this. Um, Mr. Awesome has given us a $10 super chat and he says the original red pill concept developed from the Matrix movie. That's what I thought. The world is a simulation and Neo has two choices, blue to stay asleep and sleep would be like you just stuff going on around. You don't have no idea what it is. And then the red to see the world for what it truly is. The truth comes from reality. Hmm. So. With this reality thing, now that brings a whole nother concept because you know people's reality is always their perception. What? <laughs> See, reality you know, though, because that, you know people in the projects perceive things one way, and you can't tell them that they're wrong about it. But you, the truth is, the matter is, now y'all was wrong about that because they see things differently. But Mr. Awesome, thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. You get the money line. Money line. I'm Sir, sir, hell, you have helped me out a lot. But yeah. before we get into um, Dusto over here and Mr. Bolo, I want to ask you two more questions, and then we're gonna let them talk and ask the questions also because y'all are helping me out a lot. Um, uh oh, sir, hell, I need to know what is the um objective you think, if I can ask the question that way, what is the objective of the manosphere? The, the way that I see it, and I could be completely wrong, and I'm open to that, but it's to empower men, like particularly men who don't know how to get through life, and not just in relationships, but I hear even in the space we talk about business and finances and fitness. Um, so it's empowering men to get through life and to be successful at doing it. And what, one of the key components of this is we champion men's happiness. So that to me is the purpose of the manosphere. Okay, so next question. Um, is the manosphere grounded in any uh, godly principles at all? That, that's hard for me to say that. I, 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 can't, I can't answer that. Okay. If, if I look at it as a whole, I can't say that. We, I mean, we have to get somebody who else is deep in the manosphere streets uh, to answer that one. I'm, I'm not sure on that one. There are no bylaws or there's no, there's no written, there's no tenants or anything that we follow. It's not like that. It's just the manosphere. Is that, yes. is that what I'm saying? Because so I'm just about to share. Envisioning. In some ways, I'm envisioning. Don't take this out of context. But in some ways, I'm envisioning envisioning rules and regulations and do's and don'ts. I'm envisioning that. I'm not saying that it's true, but I'm I'm kind of envisioning that as um like you said to to better myself. I'm kind of seeing things and ways to do so, and I'm kind of seeing okay, we follow this. This is what okay. Oh, uh, Shannon says no. Thanks, Shannon. All right. So those were my questions so but, far. But he has a, a follow up. He says, not okay. yet. We are writing them now. Oh, Shannon. Shannon, if you get a minute, I want you to come up to help us help us out to get some understanding. OK, so then those are my two questions. But it was one other. Um, oh, Bolo, get, show us your hand or something. Let me make sure that's you, buddy. Let me make sure that's you because I don't. So the other question is this. Should there be a place that a woman, what well, should women be able to go to all manosphere spaces? And, and, and if we can't, how do we know that this is not a place that we should go? Now this, now this is a good question, security boss. I personally say women stay out of the manosphere. Right. Women okay. just, most women screw stuff up. Yes. Okay, but if, if you just if you just grab a woman and bring her in and say, well, you know, because you're talking this way, you're a part of, how do we know to stay out? Well, how do we know where not to go? See, there's a difference. Like I said, oh. 
to, to me, I don't see you as manosphere, but I okay. see how you're associated with it. There are some women who I think are doing really good work and their attention is really to help. I do think that. But the majority of women, I'd say stay out of this because having the conversations that are not rooted in feelings is a hard thing for a lot of ladies to do. So women who don't know how to check their feelings, stay out, the, stay out, stay, don't leave us alone because it just messes up in the derails conversations. Okay. Okay. Just stay out. I mean, I like the fact of doing that, but how do we know where we're going? How do we know where we at though? How do we know when we're in the wrong place before it's wrong? <laughs> I think if you know the energy, if you okay. got a strong man and they, they got a particular way that they're talking about stuff, you will know the energy. You like you'll men will make it very clear what kind of space this is. And then you just look at the, the audience. The audience will tell you what kind of space it is. And so you just be careful. Like I said, I don't think women, sh I don't think the majority of women should be in the manosphere space. But I do think that there needs to be a lot of women who are advocates and who support the manosphere, right? So, That's so, in these, so in, on in these manosphere manosphere spaces, they don't advocate, or they're not they're not pro women for any reason. I mean, it's just all women are this way, and this is not a place for you. Or how do you know? Are you saying you just won't know? Is that how it goes? Just, you know, just no, no. I don't think that. Some manosphere, see, I think people always gravitate to the negative stuff. But the reason it's so much negative is because it's hard for a lot of our sisters to accept our experiences. And so we're people, I'm tired of having this conversation. I'm tired of talking about this. Well, it's because we don't feel heard about the thing that matters to us the most. But a lot of these guys who are talking manosphere, we love women. We want to be with women. It's just problems that we got to get over. Okay, so tell me this. And so you just brought up another question. What is it that we can do to help? Or is, it, is that the wrong question to ask? No, I think it's what you're doing now. Like you, you're showing real respect. Uh, you're showing, um, you're showing support and advocacy, letting us know that you're not just arguing back because men have a perspective or we got, we have an experience that we're communicating. You're saying, no, women, you should listen to these men. Give me what they want, and we need that. We just don't need women coming into the manosphere telling us we are wrong, and that now it's y'all fault and y'all shit because we didn't heard that for how many decades. So do we ever get to a, a good place? If if women learn to listen, yes. Okay, and, and and then how does that look to you for a woman that's listening? When a man is talking, lips closed, eyes perked up, notepad out, taking notes, observing what he's saying, and not being defensive, ready to pop off when you hear something you don't like, listen to what he has to say, respect it, and if that requires you to make some adjustments or to work on yourself, then just do it. It All really right. It be so simple. Okay, so let's do this. Mr. Awesome, thank you so much for your $2 um, super chat. Truth is truth. That's perspective, Sir Hill. Thank you so much, Mr. Awesome. Desto and Bolo, how are you all doing tonight? All is well. Desto, what you got for us, sir? Um, actually, I got a lot. I'll try to condense it. Oh, help us out. Help us, sister, out. Thank you. Okay. Honestly, there is no structure. Um, and then the other question is, are we talking black manosphere or are we talking overall manosphere? Just all people. OK, so you are help, you're helping me because, um, again, when I came into this space, I know I knew nothing about a manosphere and it wasn't my okay. goal. to know. I just came in advocating for men. And I love being married. and I love my husband. So that was basically I'm an example of what I want women to be and what I want women to have. So that's my extent of what manosphere means. So whatever you can offer, I would probably say okay. the black manosphere would be probably more so what we relate to because mm -hmm. you know, that's where we are. But if you have something to offer, then yeah, I, can, I can explain. You were talking about how do we evaluate? Let's look at the results. Um, um, Manosphere is more about the men getting what they want from women. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's fully structured because you got some of them saying don't ever marry. Then some saying, yes, do get married. Then some saying all women are this, all they're horrible. And then I think that falls into this space. But the goal of the manosphere, I think one of them is profit. One, another one is solutions. Because I think the darkest hole is with men with women. What is the biggest problem that the men can correct? 
of themselves. Yes, they can go make more money, but when they finish making the money, they still come out to the same people. Um, men have a dark hole in emotional intelligence and the men who are running to this space, one thing is there's weak, there are weak or misled people running, looking for solutions, meaning they don't know anything. So never talk to women and they come and they hit click on the wrong links and hear the wrong things from the wrong people. And they go out and it's worse because they only pick the negative and then they go out and it's worse. They don't even have a reality or a structure of how women are, but a lot of people don't know married people. They never seen marriage. They never seen had relationships. They don't know what relationships are really supposed to look like. So then they're told that all they hear is like a robot. You woman submit. I man lead. They don't know women are emotional. You have to talk to them in a certain way and communicate. You're supposed to create a, a emotional safe space for them to come into and lead with your logic. And y'all are supposed to work together. You're supposed to evaluate. Does this woman like you? And is this the space that she wants to be? They never say this in the manosphere. They just want to get the bag. Like if a dude. Walking around, no no structure, with a briefcase full of money, or some of them, well, they should take average men now. I'm making $38,000. you are going to submit. I'm like, look, um, at the end of the day, just like the nuclear physics, it was like, that, that, that killed me. You can't, you can't force a woman to think like a man. They're not going to do it. They are women. You can't always talk like a man. You're supposed to develop and work on your understanding and your communication. Number one failing thing for marriage, they say it's finance. No, it's communication. Help the men work on their communication. But also, um, women in the manosphere. The manosphere is unorganized and cast and not bringing them any results anyway. So why not have women? Like some of them are just coming in here getting paid. I mean, hey, I'm cute. I got a channel. I mean, look at me. People are paying for it. A high percentage of the men who are following, I guess, whatever, at the end of the day, they're down low simps and they're still very weak. Throw a pretty woman on Instagram or OnlyFans, they crumble. So there's someone we're going to band together. Oh, and they look over there, they see what they off. So, so does. Oh. Oh. Um, well, last thing I was going to say the war between the men and the women, I just troll them because they ain't listening anyway. And, but you know who I am. But the war between the men and I just don't get how. Are you really, as a man, going to yell, band together, and grab some women and beat the femininity into them? Women, men said what they wanted. If you really, the men that you usually want, which half of you don't want the man, we know. We know you just want his stuff. Then there's women who say they want the man, but they want him for free. Men work very hard to become the person that they are, and they're making smart decisions and they're not going to lose it all on you we don't see women doing work to make themselves better people for us to go out and marry meaning the biggest problem biggest problem to me is there's no there's not wives to choose from hmm. just because a woman raises her hand and say i want to be a wife i want i want i want weren't born yesterday a lot of the men who actually are out here not just the people who are talking but people who are out here talking dating uh offering and doing everything they can to, to better communicate and better build a space for the wives to come into. They know what a wife is and what a wife isn't. And they're saying um, there's six wives per state and there's 5,000 men who want to marry and want to get to them. Because even the Dustos still want good women. Mm. So listen, let me go back and I'll do something I'll, really quick. I'll I'll, I'll, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying I'll share the mic. I don't want to be long winded. Both okay. So let me, let me go back a little bit because I just saw Sage talk, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, hello. How are you? Uh, thank you for being here. Um, you made evening, a, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee made a comment Dr. about Mr. Lee. the manosphere. And I think he said that the manosphere is supposed to be a safe place. But let me make sure I get the comment. I'm so sorry that we were in the middle of I can't. Uh, here we go. Uh, the manosphere is true space is a true space for men. It's supposed to be a safe space for women. Wow. OK, now. Someone else made a comment right after him <laughs> that said the manosphere was never supposed to be for any woman. That's because the manosphere was never designed for women to be a part of. So know. guess what? Guys, you are confusing women. <laughs> and I got questions. Dearly <laughs> beloved. Help me out. Because <laughs> listen, I do want to have a safe place for women. But I'm paying attention and I hear the women 
running away from doing what you all are doing right now. They will not come up or come up because they don't feel safe. Now, I have managed, Nurse Fancy, hello. I have managed to be able to talk to women and men and say, look, guys, come on up. We're going to talk about it here. And I hope that everyone feels safe to be able to talk about it. But it seems like there's not a whole lot of this going on in many different places. So am I right about that or am I? I don't know. Scam, you tell me. Is it is it a, is it a safe place where men can go where there are women where they don't have to have to be abused? I'll put it like this. Women who come in these spaces as feminine women are catered to. Men stop talking and give them opportunities to speak. Men salute these women. And if they come up, probably going to have people shooting in their inboxes trying to marry these women if they are the women that they claim to be. Well, you know what? I hear what I, you're saying, but even just money on it. But, but just but just recently, though, um, scam now, 50 percent of my um, audience is women. Do you know how long it took me to get there? It took me almost a year to get that. Whereas you guys would be here. We will be having conversations, we'll be doing this, talking, you know, having good conversations. Now, the women might be there here and there. But now there are a few that saying, OK, listen, let me come up. And everything I hear from them is I'm a little bit afraid because I don't want to be dragged. You know, they want to be accountable for what they've done. A lot of them want to be wives, but I don't know why. I mean, I'm not everywhere. I can't read minds, but there is some sort of a fear that it's not going to be good. Or if they give an opinion, here we go. If my experience says to me is, is, is grounded in some form of trauma, Dusto, can I not share that with you? Sure. I, I extend grace. Okay. But, but hold on, hold on. I've been around for a while. I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot. When they come, when they come and they say something, and Sir Hale, y'all know me. And you see it's some of y'all have seen me for months. When they say something that I can repeat word for word better than they can, it's probably a problem. <laughs> when I mean, I say the can, I, talking point, can I can I interject real quick? Better you better than them. The, the, it's, the, it's one problem and it starts with an A. It's accountability. The reason security boss, why you get women who want to listen to you is because you model what you're talking about. Not once have I heard you blaming. Like I've never heard you blaming. I heard some stuff I didn't, I'm like, but when I thought about it, I'm like, it makes sense. But I've never heard you blaming. A lot of women, they, they, want, they want to tell you their story. They want to tell you how bad life has been. They want to tell you their experience, but they don't want to hear that somebody's got an experience about you. And that maybe you've got to be held accountable for some of your behaviors as well. And then that's when it goes left. So it's supposed to be a safe space, but it's got to be safe for people who want to hear the truth. Not yeah. for people who just want to tell their side of the story. I, but I, but I remember, though, so here, you started off by okay. saying the women are not listening. No. You just not. gave an example of the men not listening. Um, half A lot of the men aren't listening either. You're, you're, so, hell, did you did you see what we, what just happened? I did not, because I, I believe I believe men want to listen. It's just me. The, if it, what what we're being asked to listen to is the same rhetoric. It's not new. So the stuff that women said they they want men to work on, for the most part, a lot of men are working on. Scam likely, I do agree with the emotional intelligence part. I really mm -hmm. agree with that. But for the most part, men have are doing stuff because when a when we want a woman and she makes it clear what we need to do to get her, men go go to work. Women, when they hear what men want, have are full of excuses. Well, I would be in shape, but I had three kids. How old are your kids? Well, my, he just turned 21. Ma'am, it's been 21 years, right? So instead of just doing the work, is we got to hear all of this. You know, but my, 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 my grandpa was, you know, he, he got shot in 1942. And that really had a traumatic, like that ain't got nothing to do with the state of where you are right now. Uh, so it was actually the white accountable, man. And a lot of our women are not. Did. Okay, so listen, though. And, and, and I, I believe what you're saying, because I hear it, too. <laughs> but could that be that we're just not hearing each other? Because there's a way, Sir Hill, that I, I want you to handle me. And this is just me. I'm just using you for an example. There's a way that I want you to handle me because I have to see you. I, I need for you to have compassion, if you can, and empathy for me. Now, you may not be able to have that. That, may, that might really be where I come in at. As a woman, you know what I mean? You might I, I not be able to have that because you're total solution based and most men are right. So you may not be able to have that. But that is what women need. They need someone to feel where they are 
hear where they are and maybe have an example of what they went through. So then now they can reverse it on them, you know, use that Jedi mind trick thing and say, OK, so guess what? You slept with him, too, didn't you? And then they'd be like, "Ooh, yeah, I did sleep with him because, you know, we've been men been getting us pregnant for a long time. We never talked about us having sex. <laughs> right. You get what I'm saying? We ain't never talked about us having sex. Y'all been getting us pregnant and running out for for years yeah. now. 1942. So accountability security, boss. So, but that that's just see, it's a way of of making them see that that you understand and can relate to what they're going through before you say, I done heard that, been hearing that since 1942. So that makes it a maybe not a surf, a safe place for them. Cause you know, you are already dealing with people who are who have suffered some trauma or who may be um, socially immature, just to put it bluntly, you know, they still immature. So we got to get them to a certain place where they can see themselves and say, look, that you, you, you did that. You was in there having sex. It wouldn't, you, he wouldn't buy himself, you know, and you enjoyed it. And I bet it wasn't the first time, you know, they kind of stuff. talk to him like that. And then they can kind of, you know, you kind of walking them down the street. You kind of walking with them now because they like, damn, how she know that? How she know I had sex with her? How she know we was in the bathroom having sex? You know, say something real weird and crazy to them. And even though it might be weird and crazy, they probably can relate because they were doing it. So, but Bolo. Hey, yo, what's going what on? What you got for us, sir? I mean, I'm listening to every, you know, everybody's talking points. I think the foundation is the relationship between men and women. Can you speak up a little bit? Get a little bit louder? You sound like you're far away. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Okay. Is that yeah. right? All right. I, you know, I, I said I hear all the talking points, you know, and I think that uh, that's the hit on something, right? If the relationship isn't there between men and women, it doesn't matter what groups you form, manosphere, big manosphere, whatever, this isn't going to work. It ain't going to work if that relationship isn't there. It isn't going to work if we don't trust each other. So no matter how much you pound your chest and say, you need to hear me, you need to do this. You need to do that. They just gonna look at you and be like, "Nah, no, I don't." You know, um, don't know too much about the manosphere. I know a, a few things about the manosphere, right? You know, you have some men now. I guess since uh, Kevin Samuels passed, you know, they're trying to organize it because you had some other guys that were in the manosphere selling snake oil. You know, you know, selling a, a type of lifestyle that they wasn't living. And I think this thing is much simpler than, than it is hard, right? Simply, you know, the, the simplicity of it is truth given without love is a weapon. So if I want to get a woman to understand where I'm coming from, I got to gain her trust. That's what submissive, being submissive is. Obedience is demanded by God, so no man is going to demand obedience from a woman. We want you to submit. So it, it, we, we, we quote the scriptures and say, you know, a, a, a man finds for wife that is a good thing, which is awesome, right? Her, her worth is more than rubies and pearls. But what does she find? She finds a husband. And that's where the problem is. That's where the disconnect is. The disconnect is we have a lot of men, more men than the ones that are doing the work. More men that are more vocal than the ones that are doing the work saying, this is what I want, this is what I need, and this is what I need you to do. And these women are looking at them like, Duke, you want me to submit my life to you for what? You're supposed to be the image of Christ, and you are not. So what am I submitting to? What? Christ told you, husbands, love your wives as I love the church. Now, we understand that there's a separation between men and women when we deal with the church, right? The church of God deals with men. That's why he told women, be quiet in a church and learn from your husband because he is the physical representation of Christ. But he came back and put a caveat in that and said, husbands, don't love your wives like you love them. Love them like I loved you. I was patient, long-suffering, and all other things he was and is. That's how we're supposed to love our wives. Now, is order involved in that? Hell yeah, it is. Is discipline involved in that? Hell yeah, it is. Of course it is. But when you come with this czar, president, dictator, and all this things, ain't no woman yeah, trying to hear that, my G. God. I don't care what place you put it in. I don't care how you wrap it. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. Because I know that if I do the work on me, and I know what my worth is, it's going to show on my standards, right? 
So if I know I got a hundred thousand dollar diamond, how did I know that? Right? I had to get it certified. I had to find out where it came from. All these different things, cut clarity, all these different things. So now when I go to sell it, I ain't taking nothing less than a hundred thousand dollars. Nothing less. So once a man knows what his worth is, he going to choose wisely, correctly. We spend more time and we spend more time in trying to find a home than we do in trying to find our woman. We're not patient when it comes to finding our women. We don't show them what they need. That's the difference. Showing them what they need. These women are falling to order. Women follow power. Period. They'll follow order. I don't have to pound my chest and tell you submit to me because the Lord is going to match you with someone that matches your fly. And it's as simple as that. It's not that hard. Thank you, Bolo. Thank you so much. Mr. Lee, it's good to see you. I don't know if you hear me. Can you hear okay. me? Now so I can. Before, before I ask you what you're going to add to the conversation, I want to do this. Um, I think we had a $2 super chat from Dark Lake. And he says, and I'm paraphrasing because I have lost the super chat, but he's paraphrasing and says, I can't be have empathy for anyone that doesn't have empathy, that doesn't show empathy. So you are exactly right about that. And I think um, when I made that comment, I thought about it. And men may not be able to show women the empathy that they need. Um, and that may be something that a woman has to do to, to spark change. So I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you with that. And thank you so much for your $2 super chat. And I thank you for being here. So, Mr. Lee, how are you today? Hi, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. Doing thank well. you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, well, I've, I've been listening to the conversation for the past close to an hour or so. And it's a very good conversation. I would have just preferred to stay in the chat, but then I, I, uh, I saw the conversation was getting very interesting. And I thought maybe I can add some perspective as well. Uh, the comment that you did re read out that I typed, initially I typed it wrong because I omitted the word not. In terms of the manosphere space, the manosphere space is a space for men first. That's number one thing. Now, over the past year or so since Kevin had blew up, the women, both black, white, or otherwise, are started to pay attention more to the spaces where men are having these conversations. But this is a man's space first. And women who come into the space come in at our blessing. And they're not here to rewrite the codes of what red pill is, blue pill is, or any other pill or the, con or the context of the manosphere space. I think what Sir Hill uh, speaks said earlier with regard to you'll be able to tell by the responses you get in the chat and how you're received by other content creators is spot on. Because yes, we want women coming into the space. We want women who can advocate uh, on behalf of men in this space and that they identify with some of the things that we are experiencing and have been experiencing. But over, overall, those conversations have basically been left to the barbershop on the basketball courts in the park and so forth. Men's spaces where men usually congregate together. The thing is, is that now that women are coming into the space, you know, men, some men are just still in their blue pill stage and they're following women. And they're gravitating to the women that speaks, quote unquote, red pill like talk. But the reality is, is that women in this space who are associated with the understanding of where men are coming from and they want to support men, I think one, they should really be speaking to the women that are not in this space to bring them in to the right mindset and to speak. You're going to have to be strong because you're going to get pushback. The men get pushback. So the women who speak from a man uh, centric point of view will get pushback. And there are also men who support the female's point of view. So you're going to get pushback from both men and women in the space because as red pill men, we are still also dealing with the men who support the women that simp behavior and would like to, uh, to stay in the red pill mode for uh, a lack of my being able to articulate it the right way, I would say. But 
women are welcome and i think you are definitely someone who is welcome to the space and i think the question you're asking with regard to what is red pill what's what this man space is all about those are valid questions because obviously you seem like the person that want to be able to hit the ground running but there's a lot to take in <laughs> and it and it will take time for you to get to that point and some of it will sound confusing and there are men who have been in this space for a while who have extensive rep, uh, reputations and have been speaking on the whole red pill mindset that sometimes you may have to listen to some of those men, but they, they deliver the truth real hard, straight no chaser. And it's difficult for some men to even comprehend and deal with. There's a lot of back and forth that goes through. There's a lot of posturing that happens but as a, as a man who may not, may not have had a father or male figures in his life to really give him structure on what, it, what it's like being a man, when they come into this space, they must be broken first so they can be real, rebuilt back in the right way. And when I say broken, it means that the things that they have learned in society, the things that they have learned within their families, the things that they may have learned from previous relationships, all of those things have to be kind of ripped out, sifted, and then put back in him with a proper understanding. And that takes time for men. It definitely will take time for women. And with regard to the whole thing about why women come into this space, I think just like back in the day, we had the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. And the people who created that knew that women needed spaces for themselves where they can learn some basic things about life, nature, and so forth, womanhood growing up. That was, that was, I guess, the American way of a young boy transitioning to, to uh, manhood. And it was also a place where young girls can transition into girlhood, womanhood. But over time through feminism, they said, no, men should not have a space. Wherever men are, women want to push themselves into the room. And we know as men, it's like you move a woman into your house, within days, if not weeks, she's gonna start rearranging the furniture, taking things, moving it, house. Hide it, hiding it in the closet, put it in the garage. Within a month, that's not even gonna look like your place anymore. And the thing, what we're saying here, no woman is gonna come into the manosphere space and reorganize what this is. And I think that's the main perspective that so many men are trying to bring across to the women that engage with men in this space and that are supportive. Even a supportive woman will at time misstep or step out of line. And they have to be able to take the correction without getting caught up in their feelings, like Sir Hill's uh, speak uh, mentioned earlier. And that's problematic because women filter their communication through their emotions. So that will be a difficulty. So I'll leave it there so you, I can get caught up on the other things you guys have been speaking while I was I was switching from my phone to the computer and it took me a little while to, to get set up. That's all. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for that clarity. That helps a lot. Um, um, I just, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. And you, you want to always be in a place where you can, that you, that you feel received. I do anyway. I don't want to be anywhere that I'm not received. Um, and I know not everybody knows me. So, you know, I just want to be, you know, careful with where I go. And if it's a space that I'm not supposed to be in, I, I wish I want to know before I get there. <laughs> I want to know before I get there. But let me do this super chat. Um, Dark Lake, Dark Lake, thank you so much. He says, but SB, I still have hope. I still have hope though. <laughs> it's not over. Thank you so much for your $2 super chat. And thank you again for being here. It's not over. It is not over. So. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Mr. Lee, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. So uh, likewise. So, so this is this is all we're saying. We a woman who's willing to listen, come on, come on over. We'll get you a chair. You, you know, you sit on the porch. We're gonna be in the house talking this this talk, but you can sit on the porch. We want we need our women to hear what's going on so that they know because some women, the same men who didn't have fathers, these girls didn't have it either. And while men need to have an example. Girls need to know what it's like to be with a man as well. So we need women to hear this. We just don't want women coming in here and now the conversation has changed and we got to focus on feelings and we got to make sure you feel good about what we're talking about. And I think that's why we're saying we don't want women to infiltrate the conversation because it's a different conversation when women are in here. Like if Mr. Lee said, Sir Hill, 
you need to fix it in these areas. And I'm getting grilled. As a man, it might be tough, but as a man, I know that this is good for me. And whether emotions get high and it, it gets contentious, at the end of the day, I'm going to respect Mr. Lee because I interpret him telling me the truth as somebody who cares about me. Women hear that, you try to tell the truth. Now you're getting ready. You're trying to insult me. And I think right. that's the difference. So we need women to be patient and don't try to talk about something before you've listened well to the issue. And I think that's what a lot of them are doing. They hear a talking point and they want to get go in on the talking point. And that talking point is connected to other issues. Yes. And so you get a good perspective on what we're talking about. That's why I say open up your ears and keep your lips closed. And then once you hear long enough, you will know when it's necessary for you to say something or when it's not. You know, when you said that statement earlier, when I was watching uh, my phone, you know, open up your ears and keep your mouth closed. I'm, I could just see women's faces and their cringe from hearing that. You know, that's all that sounds like 50 to 100 years ago, you know, that stay silent and barefoot and pregnant and that type of ideology or, or men talk. But really what it is, is that I think women and men have really diverged from one another. Men have maintained the traditional structures of life and society because we don't have the luxury of being wrong and treated like we're right. Women, on the other hand, have that luxury that they can make any mistake and there's no consequences. And in this space, when women misstep, we make them aware of the consequences of their mistake or misstep, whether intentional or by negligence, because we as men don't have the luxury to be able to do something accidental that we didn't know and still walk away with no punishment. That don't happen to us. Many times we get accused of things that we didn't even do. Like mm -hmm. earlier today, I was listening to uh, another another uh, YouTube channel and they were talking about how in several states, they listed about almost 10 states. They're passing laws where if a woman willingly or even your girlfriend get into a relationship with you and she gets pregnant, she can now sue you automatically for unintended pregnancy. That's one thing. The other thing is the, a man now will have to start paying child support from the time a woman is pregnant within the first 30 days. Whoa. Without knowing whether that child is his or not. And even worse, that he can all, the man can only get a DNA test to find out if that child is his, if the woman agrees. Mm. What kind of message is this that the law is sending men when it comes to men and women trying to come together in relationships? That's pushing men away because they're saying, for me, that's dangerous. For a bum, it don't make no difference because he ain't going to pay child support. You can yes. sue him all you want to. You ain't getting nothing from him. But the men who want to be successful in life, or laying a foundation to build and to be able to have a wife and have a family, those men are under attack. And in this space, we focus on building men up. Well, you're, you're right, but I actually think I've been seeing some of the comments and I actually think that you all should keep it as a man's space. Um, I think far as I go, I would want the women to come in and allow me to use me as an example to become better women. And we do what we have to do over here. And if, if they meet in the end, they meet. But I do Absolutely. think that it's a better it's a better fit for you all to continue to um, make the men aware of, of just like what you just mentioned, the laws that are changing. Um, so they'll know the responsibility of uh, having sex, premarital sex, and they won't give their power to women that don't care anything about them. They'll know that, you know, I don't need to do this unless I'm ready to suffer these consequences, because a lot of things of what we do, we don't know the consequences of them. So we just we just out here real loose, just doing whatever we want. And me over here, I'll continue to talk to women and share with them the consequences of how important it is for them to preserve themselves uh, as far as sex goes and wait on their husband if they want to be married. And then we're going to have those that in between that don't care nothing about nothing about what we're saying and they're going to continue to live their lives. So true. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of people in this spaces who are not, who do not, or will not that still want. 
and that's on both sides. There are men who aren't willing to provide a comfortable space for the wife to come into. They actually so, um, really don't want marriage. They want some kind of fake marriage deal because they're scared of the system. Then they want the wife to submit, do everything he says, and then go out and spend more time with the side chicks. I hear this stuff. And I'm like, really? Or they want six wives and they make $28,000 a year. And because they're a man, this is, you know, they got to fall in line. I hear women who come in and they quote the, they quote the talking points word for word. Um, if you wait 30, 60 days, you'll see their real behavior. Or if you scroll up and down the chat, you'll see who they really are. But they want um, a high value man, six, seven, with glow in the dark abs and a briefcase of $400,000 in cash to take care of them and their children. <laughs> it's repetitive. It's the same. Like, like I say, the, it gets to the point where I could stick five of me on the top and five of me at the bottom and actually carry on a three hour conversation. Like a Can't lot you, of people aren't willing. Go ahead. If, if, you're, if, you're, if you're training these men, right, to, to honor themselves, respect themselves, and understand what their worth is, and understand what their worth is to the community, then, you know, they're going to understand what type of women that they're going to start to deal with and what type of women that they're going to attract. So these type of women that are, how they say, for the streets, they should see them coming a mile away. They should see them coming a mile away. So I think that, you know, when we're talking about the, the, the manosphere, right, and keep women out of the manosphere, right, because I've never heard no one put it the way Mr. Sage talked about it, which was very eloquent, you know. If that's the case, then, you know, then women need to stay out and let these men build themselves up and get to the point where they need to be so that they understand what their worth is, so that they can go into the communities and do what they need to do to get the families right, get the fractured families together, and, 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 and uh, set the examples for these children and for these wives, potential wives, that need to be, be handled. But again, you know, it starts with us as the men. Well, the issue is when the men do come out the weight room, come from the bank, come from the car lot and close on the deal, they come out to the same women, bigger, more kids, more masculine, or complaining even more about the men five years prior to with, than when they went in their phase of going to build and become so, to be better. Yeah, but see, that goes into... Meaning they're, they're coming out and there's no wives to choose from. Yeah, but that's wrong. That's wrong. But see, that goes into understanding. That goes into putting quality on your post, putting quality in you. We keep talking about there's no wives out there. They are out there. You just haven't hit their frequency to get them. You just haven't attracted them. You hang out with 11 broke people, so no later you become the 12th. Your vibe attracts your tribe. You got, I don't know if Mr. Sage is mad. Are you married, sir? Is he what? Mr. Are you Sage married? Is are you married, Mr. Sage? Mr. Sage talk? Oh no, I'm not married. I'm divorced. I was okay. married. Okay, so you had a man that was married who did it. He found a wife. So Hale is married. Found mm -hmm. a wife. I don't know if you're married, Dusto. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm married. So it's not hard. We did it. We did the work, right? We did the work. So now you have Sage talk, taking his experience, taking what he's learned, and now he's trying to apply it to give it to the to the younger men, the younger GDs that are coming up. It's not hard. All we have to do is focus on ourselves first before we focus on everything else, before we focus on the bag, before we focus on that. Focus on the inner love. Because once we tap into God, all of the little things are going to follow. That's why it's a seek you the kingdom first. All else is going to follow. And how do we seek you the kingdom? By knowing what we are, knowing what we're for, what well, we're on this earth to do. If I may add something to what you're saying, okay. uh, Bobo. Please. Uh, one, I think with regard to finding a wife, the thing is in society, it's different now to tell who is a good woman from who is a, who is wearing the stripper outfit. Most women today dress very similarly and you really can't tell the difference between them. They got the long nails, 
they got all the hair extension thing going on. They've got the body augmentation, and then they're wearing outfits that show all the crevices of their body. So on a first glance, you can't really tell who is who because the, the good woman is pressured to be accepted in society so she could get approached by men. But the men that are approaching the IG model types are not approaching them to look for wives. They're looking for a good time and they know they're gonna have to spend some money somewhere to do that. I think what the manosphere and what we're trying to do is first raise the standard for men on what they should be looking for in a woman, period. And then the women that do come into this area, this space, to be able to see and understand what is it that the men want? And what am I not projecting to make myself visible to the man that wants a wife? If that woman wants to to be wants a husband and wants to be such a wife. And I think sometimes we always try to blame the men as that we don't choose correctly. And I'll just drop a little tidbit about my life because it's my first time being on this show. You know, I met my wife, my former wife, when she was like 12 or 13. Her brother and I went to the same school. I'm from New York. I grew up in Harlem. I was older than her by six years. She approached me as a little girl and I totally ignored her. I was already in a relationship with a young girl my age as well. But she had a cousin that, was, that I knew that was around 16, 17 years old. So we all from the same neighborhood, we talked. And every time she was outside, she would send her cousin to come and get me. And I would play her off. So one day, finally, she was outside with her mom. And she sent her cousin to get me and said she wanted to introduce me to her mom. So I, I went. I wasn't doing nothing. So I said, OK, what the heck? I went. I met her mom. My mom told me it was OK to talk to her. You can't take her out nowhere. And I knew that. But if you got time and you want to talk to her, my daughter likes you, da 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 da, da. I listened to the conversation, but I didn't really pay it no attention. I just ignored it. And months went by, and then another time, she sent to get me, and she was there with her father, both her mother and father. So then a, a father tells me, and a father is like, he's like 6'4". He used to be a, a union member of the Steelworkers Union, and I think he was vice president for some period. This is a big dude. I mean, when I shook his hand, my hand disappeared, and I'm not a big guy. But he said, you know what? And he, I gave him my name. He said, Lee. He says, my daughter really likes you, and I'm giving you my blessings if you want to talk to her. Now, she came from a mother and a father home. She was well taken care of. That same day, the father invited me to dinner, and that really started the conversation where I took her number, and from time to time, we would talk. So I knew her from she was like 13 years old. We didn't get married until she was 24. I went to college. I left college and I went to work. I was working out of state. I was working in engineering at the time. And it was while I was away that one day I just called her up to wish her happy birthday. But I called her one month too early. <laughs> so she said, Lee, this is not my birthday. It's next month. So I said, oh, cool. Maybe I'll come back and I can celebrate your birthday with you. And that's and she was making 20 or 21, 20 at the time. So that's how we started talking again, because we had lost touch for several years after I moved out the neighborhood and went to college. But I say this because I had even told my mom before I left the neighborhood, if there's one girl from this neighborhood that I would marry, it would be her because she came from what appeared to be a stable family. I knew her brother. We went to school together. I knew many other members of her family. I knew her mom and dad. So I thought I could not go wrong with a, with a woman that was more well-structured or a young lady. But other things showed itself after we got married, even though we dated for almost four years after she became you know, 20 years old. And my point is, is that it is so difficult, and I don't like when I hear men allude to the fact that other men have to choose better. Obviously, yes. You have to choose the best woman that you think will meld with you. But the choosing with regard to the society of women, everything looks the same. It's like unless you put on those day live glasses where you can see where you can see the snake, everybody don't look like a snake. They all look the same. So I think sometimes when we hear that, you know, it's kind of like 
a slap, an insult slap to men because they're saying, the pro see, the problem is your fault. See, the problem is your fault. You just chose, a, you didn't choose the right kind of woman. And it's almost like it's a luck of the draw. And that's why when I first saw you, security boss, and you told me that you were married and you've been married for 27 years, I, I, uh, I applaud that because those are the kind of women and that is what men in this space are really looking for. I think that there are some men that are in the mindset, especially younger men in their mid-20s and so forth, who they're just reacting to the way that the society is. Yep. I can't choose a woman to be to be with, so I'll just bust her, bust her out, get my nut off, move on to another one, have a stable. But at the same time, as you mature and grow up, you leave out of that behavior. As you, as you become more financially secure, you have to leave that behavior because you will pay, you know, you will pay out of your pocket for mistakes that you make. And I think that's something too that, you know, just as men, we have to also look at both sides because the men who are able to do it and succeed, you know what? All the stars lined up for you well. But there are other men who thought they were doing the best that they can do in choosing a wife and the stars didn't line up for them either as well. So they are cast out into the broader society where everyone say, well, because you, you, you got married and it didn't work out, you chose wrong. And it's not always just that you chose wrong. It's just the way the society influences people. Some and women are, are very much social creatures. They're influenced far more easily than men are influenced. Because if we fall into the influence, we know there's no one's going to be there to to tell us, oh, you know, that was just a mistake. Don't worry about it. You learn from life experience and just go on. We're going to have to pay a price, whether it's financial or whether it's prison or whether it's something in between. Well, I do agree with you that society is a weak excuse for me. I do agree with you. Um, when I say that, I don't mean to be offensive to me. I didn't take it so. I oh, didn't take it so. Okay. No, no, must be it. Okay, thank you. I'm not trying to be offensive. What I'm saying is we take a hard enough toll when we do fall. You just mentioned three of them, right? We're talking about financial. You're talking about being incarcerated. You're talking about your name plastered on, on in certain newspapers in certain states. So when I say to, you know, when I say to men that, of course, you know, all you can do is do. You can only control the controllables. You can't control nothing that's out of your your, 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 your your hands. You can only control what you control. And the reason why I say what I say is, I find myself that when I'm dealing with men and counseling men, that a lot of the times the mistakes that, that have been made, it has been made because of premature uh, movement and not taking that time, right? And this doesn't go for all men. Like you said, some men can it just don't line up. Sometimes things happen and, you know, whatever the situation might be, that happens. But when we talk about most of these men that are out here, and this is why I say that we need to do the work on ourselves first, right? And that's why I like what you said, that we, you know, and that's the reason why I say that we spend more time trying to get our credit right, trying to buy that crib, trying to get that car than we do vetting our women. Now, again, absolutely what you said, it's hard to, to kind of, figure out who's who and what's what. And, and and I like that reference you made to They Live, that that's an old school cult classic that a lot of people don't know. However, when you take your time to put her in certain situations, to understand who she is, not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, that's gonna give you a better understanding. Doesn't mean that you're gonna pick right, but it's gonna give you a better understanding of who and what you're dealing with and how to move opposed to using your sight to look at her fat behind and look at her breasts and say i'm i'm dealing with that chick a lot of us pick what we want opposed to what we need right what we need a woman to be feminine what we need a woman to be submissive what we need a woman to to multiply what we bring what we need women to be a pillar of rest not the pillar of stress there's a whole plethora of things that we need but a lot of our men, being that they don't have that example of these four men on this panel, they're picking with sight instead of vision. They're playing checkers instead of chess. 
So this is why it's so important for mentorship to let these men know, learn from the mistakes that I made. You know, learn from the mistakes, learn from bumping my head here so that you don't have to bump your head. So that's the reason why I say about the choice and why it starts with us. Not to be offensive at all. No, that's cool. Can I can I offer a perspective really quickly? Um, I just said back, uh, Sage uh, said some 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 excellent stuff that I agree with. Um, you know how you go to work, you get a new job, and they got leadership training, and then they got training for everybody else. They got training for whatever whatever you're going to be doing. For since I'm thirty, I'll be thirty five in August. August six. Shout out to the August babies. What's up, y'all? <laughs> so since i've been alive it has always been me need to believe me and need to be strong men to be providers here's a big one many to step up and take leadership in the community in the homes so me have been going to leadership training for a long time but leadership needs fellowship and we need our women to not only know what a leader looks like but how to follow that leader and i think that's where we clash at so when a lot of our women are not performing the way that they should the default reason is well if you were a better leader, then I would be a better father. And I think we got to eliminate those excuses so that when we come together, there's not so much friction. And to be honest, it's not a man's job to make his woman. It's not a man's job to make her who she should be. There's right. got to be a level of preparedness she comes with because if she's going to be a help me, it's hard for her to be a help me if, if she's in a position and he has to do all the helping for her. And this is not to say they can't help each other. But I'm saying a lot of our, if, if we come into marriages prepared, prepared to be a wife, prepared to serve, and for being prepared to leave and provide service, I think the clashing stops more and we find more success. Too often, though, we place the burden of leadership on the men and we, we it's the de facto. But we got to teach fellowship as well. And we got to promote that. And that's, we got to be unapologetic about it. Okay, so then I got a bunch of pushback for that. You know I do. That's not how I see marriage. Um, I saw, I was, I saw a wife as an example. So the externals came for me very easily, the service, the nurturing and all of that. But I still had to adapt to the man my husband was. Me being a wife wasn't going to cut it. I need to adapt to whatever it was he needed me to be, helpmate that he needed me to be. There, there's no, there's no cookie cutter way to say that, but to have to adapt no. to him. That's why I can't be anybody else's wife, but my husband's as I am now. The state that's that I'm so in. that is that's my truth. That's that's how exactly it is. I had to adapt to this man, my husband, for 27 years, or every day I he I needed to be his helpmate in the way that he needed me to be. There was no general statement that made that right. But as far as the externals go, washing up clothes, cleaning up the house, cooking up the food, I got that. But there is a part. There's a mental part of becoming one with your husband that a woman must be willing to accept. Yes, you're right. And I think what Sir Hale Speaks was saying was that the woman should come into the relationship with a man that a man that is serious and intending to marry her with, you know, like when you go buy a car, there are standards that comes with the car, standard things. You have a door lock, whether you're buying electronic or, or, or manual, it's got a sunroof, it's got different things, it's got brakes got a steering wheel, but then there's added options. The added options is what you're talking about, security boss, where the man customizes the woman to him. But she must come, like Sir Hale Speak says, with some standard operating systems already in place so he can then, that's why in this space, you'll always hear a lot of men say that some woman is too hard to mold, right? Mm -hmm. When they get past 35 years of age, gotcha. you can't mold them anymore. Gotcha. Their life and experience have hardened them in a certain way that they're not going to submit to no man. And and I and I think uh, you know we throw around the term submission so wildly. Hmm. Submission is something that a woman learns from the time she's a child. She's watching her mom. She sees how her mom interacts with her dad, what he does for her dad. She practiced that in in her training with her brothers or siblings and so forth. And submission really is a woman, when you talk about a helpmate, is a woman who is looking for ways to help better that man's life, whatever that man in her life is doing. Because she learned that by observing the wife being helpful for, to the dad. And she herself, as she grew, she became helpful for the dad too, 
when mom may have been busy, tired, or out of the house. So she had some earlier years of practicing on how to be submissive onto a man. And I think sometimes the way we interpret submission, it's like someone standing with a whip, the old slave master, <laughs> whipping you tied up at a post until you bend the knee. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's how it's largely interpreted between in black community because we came out of slavery. So we tend to look back and, and, and define certain things based on our past experience. See, we don't have hundreds and thousands of years of culture to refer back to because all of that was stripped away. All we have now is what we can piece together from the little bit that was passed down and the broader part of what we see in society. And the broader part of what we see in society don't benefit us. It really don't. So let me take a break really quick and just say this. Guys, when you're coming into the live, make sure you're giving us a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, this is Security Boss Unsolicited. Make sure you go subscribe to the channel. Also, my co-host is here, Sir Hell Speaks. Make sure you go over and subscribe to his channel. And also, Sage Talk Mr. Lee. And we got Bolo TV. Make sure you guys are all going to these channels and subscribing because we are having, guess what, guys? We are having perfect conversation, just in case y'all didn't realize. Absolutely. Nobody's beating anybody up. There's no disrespect. I mean, it's just going so well. And this is what I'm all about. Let's just talk and have the conversation. So this is excellent for me. But I want to say this. Um, so, hell, I think I understood you. And maybe I just went the wrong direction. But I understood what you're saying. You have to be a wife coming into the marriage. And I get it. You're, exactly. Right. But what I want to do, um, and I need to tell you guys, that, and all the women that are in the chat and looking live, all of you. Um, I do want to create that space for these women that want to be married because I don't think we had the best examples of what a wife or marriage looks like. So I would like to extend SB Nation, my panel, to you all to come over if you honestly want to be married because it's going to be some tough talk because you do have to submit yourself. You do have to submit your will to be married to a man. You really, really do. But it's beneficial because that is your purpose. We come from the man. We're come from, we are made from the man. Y'all know the story. So your purpose, if you want to be a wife, is to be with that man. So it's not that you don't win because you do, but you have to understand what you're doing and, and make sure that that is what you want to do because it is beneficial. I am so covered. I'm so protected from so many things out here in this world. I don't have to think about it. You would never, I would never have a thought of who is my baby daddy. <laughs> or which man was he? I would never think anything like that. I would never think about diseases and things of that nature because I have a husband who does loves me and adores me. And he's here with me all the time. He's right, he's my co-host. Every time this camera's on, he's with me. Dearly beloved. And you all can have that too. I know that the world is against marriage or what have you, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's what you make. But I am willing to share my life. And my husband is willing to share me and our life for you to get there if that's what you want. So this could be your safe place, ladies. But I do think we should leave the manosphere alone <laughs> and let the men get the men where they need to be so they can be there for the women that actually want to um, be married. I really think that we should leave you alone and let you all have your space. That's, Thank you. That's my analogy of that. I really well, do. I, well, I would say this, right? Uh, for women who did not have a father in the home or women who have fell into the trap of feminism in the society, coming into this space from however they were drawn here can enlighten them to have better outcome with men, whether they're in a relationship, married, or is looking for a relationship. But I think shows like yours, which could be on the periphery of the manosphere space, and as you grow more in the space and may tune into certain other platform uh, channels on this, in this space, as, it, as you broaden your scope and understanding, you would definitely be, and some of the ladies would definitely be an influence where women can have that same safe space to come up on the panel, have the discussion as a group, and influence other women in the space. Because what I don't like, and I see most of the time, similar to what's happening here, but your question required men to be here. Right, but right. What I would, yeah, what I would really like to say is I would like to – come by your show and see five or six women on the panel, mm -hmm. look at the chat and the conversation that's going on and just sit back and enjoy it. Because I don't, I don't like when I go to a female channel that's in this space 
and it's just crowded with women, I'm mean, sorry, crowded with men engaging with her. It looks off, you know? So, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not throwing no shade on what you're doing today, but I'm just saying you are here to try to focus on women. Perfect. Your question today needed men to be here to deal with, to deal with getting some of those answers and clarifications. And since you have a co-host, and which I wasn't aware of, but since you have a co-host, I think that can really build a dialogue because that's something also that I think is missing and necessary is to really build good dialogue between men and women and to be able to see what that looked like. And also to be able to see visually when a woman is corrected by a man and she realized the correction and she can then express it without you know, getting overly emotional. I think black men need to see, to see that because usually what we see, especially as children, is the knee-jerk reaction of our mothers, the frustration that life had put upon their shoulders for whatever reason they became a single mom, that they're short-tempered and short-patient, particularly with their young boys. And we don't get to see, you know, our women really talk to us in any loving, respectful kind of way. Like, I, I don't live in the country. I live in Central America in Honduras. <clears throat> and I see how Latin women interact with Latin men. And it's, it's something that a man could be making $1,000 or $500 a month, and that man will get respect from his sister, <laughs> from his wife, yeah. from his mom, from his grandmother, he walks into the house and his mom is immediately, you hungry? You want something to eat? Sit down, sit down. And the sister would go in the kitchen and fix him a plate and sit it down right there, right? But we, our, our response is like, you're big enough and you got two hands, fix it yourself. And, but, and that's sometimes what we hear women say when they come over to the space. And I think that's because women don't have, a, our women don't have a respect for our men. They don't have respect for their fathers because sometimes they don't even know who the father is, but that's not their fault. That's their mom's fault, right? And I think in this space, we're really trying to un uproot all the things that have damaged us, throw away the bones that don't apply, keep the meat that does, and then fix that and build upon that. And that starts with the man. And then when the women come in, if they're dealing with you who have been part of a successful marriage, and continue so and understanding the broader thinking spaces of men in this in this area you can help balance off uh i guess the shock value of when women come into this space how they're like in your face real hard and they don't <laughs> have no clue on what's going on and some women will take it as a personal attack when this is speaking in a very general sense with regard to women in general and then black women in particular I got a question. So women are saying we don't want to cam up because, you know, whoa, it's a lot to cam up. But they have Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook and post all day for the world to see. And there's 121 people watching. I just want to, just, I, don't, I don't get it. So you don't think it's a different woman that is saying that they don't want to cam up than the Instagram models? Don't say Instagram models I'm talking about a lot of women live on social media. They're posting food to do everything on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, like a common daily routine. You're talking thousands of people to see. There's 123 people watching now. Well, I would say this. I think, you know, Kevin, RIP to Kevin, rest in peace, bro. He created a space where, and the way in which he presented a show where women can feel comfortable to come on board, even, even though he talked to them in a very straight, manly type of way to give them the information so they can make, get the results that they were trying, that they were seeking. But when you do have a panel of men, I think it is intimidating for women to come into that space with a panel of men and engage in conversation. Unless she has been in this space for a year or more and understand the conversation and can add to it from a female perspective, 
if she's coming in two, three, four, five, six months, she's still very raw. She's protective. She's defensive. And once she starts exhibiting some of the nature that she has been a part of in society, she's going to get checked real hard. Men here are not going to be merciful with her because we know in the society, women are cruel to us. It's women who call the cops on black men to get black men locked up. And that's, that's, I mean, now I'm not saying that there are men who don't deserve that. Absolutely. <laughs> there are men who do, do deserve that because they're violent with women and they're violent with children and they're violent with other men as well. But I would not stretch it to say that most of the people in marriage are good relationship. The men are so uh, terrible that they need the police in their home to mitigate a situation. Sometimes it's just the fact that the woman don't want to submit to the man and she goes off. Some men have the ability to walk away, leave the house and come back hours later to give thing, uh, things an opportunity to die down. But most men, or I would say not most, but some men are not able to do that. Some men feel that walking away might present itself as being weak. And then they engage the confrontation. And confrontation usually always escalate between men and women. So that's something that, you know, I'm hoping with regard to my uh, uh, channel, Sage Talk, that I'm trying to help give men more balance and how to think through the next steps of what your present encounter can cause several minutes later or several hours later or another day in your life when situation seems to get, be getting out of control to look at the situation and say, situation and say, is it worth it for me to engage here and now? Walk away, let it cool off and deal with it later. Because when, when we don't allow that space for things to settle, whenever it gets out of hand, a black man is gonna suffer. And sometimes it's life threatening as well. And I think that's the, I think that's the most important part that a lot of our black men are very emotional because they haven't had fathers and they were raised by their mothers and they take on those tendencies of being emotional. So it's very important that they have, they stay in cognitive thought. This is why mentorship is so important. Patience is so important. Learning that being a man is not about running through walls. It's not about pounding your fist. It's about thinking, knowing when to apply pressure and when not to, when to walk away and when to stay and fight. Because it's very important. Even when black men are stopped by the police, they're very emotional. When your job is to de-escalate the situation, our job as OGs is to teach these young men that you need to think your way through situations. Not always use your fist. I'm not telling you there ain't going to be a time when you need to use your fist, but that shouldn't be your first option. All right, guys. So listen, I have, appreciate you all. The only thing I could think of that may be a good um, counter show or another show to what we're talking about right now, as far as the women goes, it could be something like this because you guys have helped me understand the manosphere much better. Right. So maybe if women had a better understanding of what's actually going on, they may not feel and I'm using their words. They may not feel attacked or they may not feel they may not feel the need to be in your face because now we're moving in purpose. We're learning more about each other as far as men and women. And then once I understand you, maybe I can deal with what you're doing a whole lot more. So that could be just another show where is I'm here and um, the women are asking questions and we're just gaining answers on the manosphere and the way the red pill responds or the way things are like they are. And then we can bounce off of each other. That way it would take care of Sir Hill's problem. What he said is that they're not listening. Because in this way, they have no choice but to listen. You're saying, listen, this is the problem. This is why we're this way. I want you to hear my concerns. And then if they know that if they know that they're there to hear your concerns, then there shouldn't be anything else said. There should be an understanding. I'm here to gain knowledge today. So I'm going to sit back and gain. Then, you know, the more they understand, like Mr. Lee said, if they only been here three or four or five months, they're not going to get it. But as time goes on and we go through the process, then they'll understand that, OK, no, these guys are here because they're explaining what happens to them and men have feelings, too, and so on and so on. So now 
then we can maybe interact more than they can came up more because now they understand exactly what's going on. Whereas, it's, you know, now they just feeling, you know, like I said, they may be feeling attacked or whatever. But I think with understanding, we can be better uh, stewards of the information and, and can be can better understand what you're saying, you know, because I just don't think they understand and they're not listening. So all of what you said was true. <laughs> so. But I, the final thing, uh, uh, security boss. Uh, uh, so, ladies, get used to sitting back and listening, and get your spirit right because y'all spirit be ready to argue, and then all you need is one comment to say, "Girl, you right," and then you listen. Be okay with listening. Everything is not an argument. Everything is not a fight, and everything is doesn't mean you win or you lost just because you listen. You want to be married. Be okay with a man being a lead. Be okay with being submissive. And both men and women, for the love of God, we got to learn how to listen to each other with, with respect and with empathy and quit blaming each other when one person brings up an issue with the other. That's not an opportunity to go back and forth and like we're at a food fight throwing stuff back and forth. <laughs> learn when to listen. Learn when to listen. And if we can listen better, then I think we're going to have better relationships. And this ain't just for those who want to be married. This is for those who are as well. Exactly. Just to be better people. But it was one thing too, Sir Hill, I wanted to add to that. I want to ask the women, why do you all have to wear everything a person says? You know, like for instance, when men come in, they say this be this, or if I hear men saying be that doesn't affect me because I know I'm not a B. But I do understand that when women hear a lot of women, when they hear that, they go crazy. Why do we wear everything that is being said? Women, we got to just think about that. Play it over in your head. We're going to come back another day and I want y'all to share with me. Why do we wear everything that is being said? Why does it have to apply to us? Something just something should not apply to you. Not everything should be you. If it is, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> a lot of work to do. So listen, guys, it's been two hours and 36 minutes. And I appreciate y'all so much for being here. Um, and we're going to do this again because like I said, it's some work that needs to be done and I want the ladies to be more involved. Of course, we're going to do the work. But again, I thank you. I appreciate you all. Mr. Lee, thank you for having me. Up. Bolo, thank you for being here. For such wisdom. My co-host, thank you for showing up. And Dusto, you know you are always welcome because you're that voice that knows everything or a little bit about everything. <laughs> so we got to have you here. Again, chat. I welcome and thank you all. Y'all made an excellent conversation and everybody stayed respectful. And this is a conversation we want to always have. Thank you all for being here. And again, welcome to SB Nation and we'll see you soon. Have a good night. But I am to the core. You're the whole damn thing. Then you ask him for more. You want that old jive swing. You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. You drink it all to Bacardi. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love, I don't got it. You scream and stay, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance, we roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. Instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though he's screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts they too are scared to usher off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in a daze Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Come up, what your crew think? I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take a to my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing, 
Instead of them watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars Reading poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reason So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't stay No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul On the road, I can't stay No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul On the road, I 